afternoon and then take a longer break in the afternoon period. But it is going to be up to 80 degrees. All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. I apologize for the delay. Uh, Y'all may be seated. I've been uh, on the phone a lot this morning trying to get this whole AC thing straight out. It's a lot cooler in the courtroom. They had that huge AC unit that you saw. Of course, that doesn't work uh, because you can't have that door open because probation's right across the hall and they're seeing people all day, every day. Um, so, that's their smallest unit. Um, for other reasons, the AC is down, which I will see. So what we're gonna do is bring that thing back in the courtroom during lunch and have it run all during lunch. And hopefully that will cool off the courtroom a lot. And then um, take a longer break in the afternoon if it gets really hot. Now Friday is supposed to be 80 degrees in Dallas, so it's gonna be really hot in the courtroom. So I suggest layered uh, and uh, I'm coming, my allergies are killing me, I'm coming down with a cold, so I'm all sorts of frustrated. All right, <laughs> thank you for your patience. Ms. Pittman, please call your next witness. Yes, Your Honor, the state calls Kathleen at De Leon. <coughs> Is Kathy DeLeon, um, K A T H Y D E capital L E O N. And 
Ms. De Leon, uh, can you just tell the jury a little bit uh, about what you do for a living? Um, you know, a little bit about yourself. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm a hairdresser. Uh, I've been doing hair for probably over 35 years. Um, color specialist. Um, I actually do people from all walks of life. Uh, I've done attorneys, I've done doctors, dentists, um, anywhere from A to Z. You know, I may have a, a preacher's wife in my chair, and then I may turn around and have a stripper in my chair. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, the facets that I go through in my business is, um, you know, it's, it's quite amazing. So. Uh, you said you've been doing this for about 30 years? Yes, ma'am. Is it fair to say that uh, when you have a, a client uh, that you have seen over the course of you know, several years, that, that that client generally becomes pretty comfortable talking to you? Absolutely. Okay, and, and you know, I, would, I would hate for my hairdresser to ever be called uh, to talk about me or <laughs> anything else like that. You kind of get all the secrets and all the things. I do. Okay. Uh, people are very... Uh, kind of interesting they're they're very open when they uh, come to see you it's kind of like we're their psychiatrist you know um, they really lean on us for a lot you know they do tell us a lot of things that uh, that they may not even tell their family so um, you know most of the things that, that my clients tell me uh, I do you know kind of take it uh, you know, it's a very personal thing to me. I mean, I'm very close to my clients. Um, I've been doing a lot of clients for as long as I've been doing hair. So, you know, I do have clients who are like family to me. Um, I don't really take my stories home. You know, I mean, I'm sure it gets very boring to my husband to hear, <laughs> you know, um, like all the different stories that, that, uh, that a client may tell me. Now, one of those clients that you saw through the years was uh, Miss Lisa Dykes. Is that is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And do you recall when you started um, seeing Miss Dykes? Um, early 2016. And she was referred to you by another client. Is that correct? Yes, uh, she was referred to me by uh, a longtime client of mine um, who worked in the same building she did. I believe they worked on the same floor. And um, they became, I, I guess they were acquaintances. They'd see each other like, uh, you know, like on the floor and say hi and whatnot. And uh, uh, Lisa inquired to her, she said, you know, she said, your, your hair always looks amazing. Who do you go to? Uh, so uh, she gave her my information. She says, well, you know, she may be far for you to go. And so she asked where I worked. And uh, she was like, oh my gosh, she, you know, I live right by there. If you can give me her number, I'd love to get in contact with her, so. Okay. And you started seeing her, you said, in 2016, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Um, and this morning you provided me with a couple of uh, just printouts of schedules, because you all had kind of a, a scheduling system on the computer, is that right? Yes. Um, here are my approach to witness. You did. Leon, I'm just going to hand you what's been marked States Exhibits 81 and 82. representation of those uh, two printouts that you sent me this morning. It yes. is. Your Honor, uh, state moves to offer 81 and 82 for all purposes. If you could tender to opposing counsel, thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Your Honor, um, I'm going to object first on relevance and then second I'm objecting um, you can't tell on here who the client is I, I don't see who the client is I see a list of dates but I don't see the client your objection is relevant 
the same as this one as the rubber hose if you could like right here. She has one yeah, of your yeah. scissors, I believe. Uh, that's, that's a copy. I'm sorry, sir. Are those her copies? No, no, she's got her copies. Okay. Change. These are uh, and Miss De Leon, um, the Miss Dyke's name is not on here, but um, are you aware you pulled this um, from your computer? System? Yeah, so the way um, we had the computer set up at work, um, it would go through like, we would pinch in our client's name and then it'd go to a second page and it would have like a list of uh, like all the services that we would do to that particular client and that's what you see there. And one of the purposes of this, this is going to kind of help you refresh your recollection of the various conversations you had with Miss Dykes over the years. Yes. Your Honor, I would uh, offer states 81 and 82 again uh, for all purposes. Same objection, Your Honor, brought against you. If she can, if she needs it to refresh her memory, then at that at that time, the document can be presented to her. But until we see that there's uh, some faulty memory going on, then I don't necessarily need to have it. Hold, hold, hold on, hold on. You have to wait for someone to ask you questions. Too. Thank you. Uh, Judge, we can just offer it for record purposes at this time. All right. Is there any objection to it being offered for record purposes? No, Your Honor. All right. States Exhibits 81 and 82 are admitted for record purposes only at this time. Thank you, Your Honor. And Ms. DeLeon, you just mentioned that you probably don't need it. Um, if for any reason you needed to refresh your recollection, just let me know and I can uh, present that to you, okay? Yes, ma'am. Um, so we talked about you met in 2006. She was uh, referred to you by one of your clients. And uh, when you first met her and, and did her hair the first time, um, was she pleased with her, her service? She was. Uh, in fact, she continued seeing you until uh, she moved from the Dallas area in, uh, I believe, October of 2020. Is that, is that correct? Yes. When do you recall was the last appointment that you had uh, where she actually came and saw you? Uh, October 10, 2022. 2022? Um, 2000, yes. Uh, okay. Um, I'm sorry, did you say 2020 or uh, 2020 or 2022? I may have misheard you. Um, all I know, it was, the, it was right when this girl went missing was the last time that I saw her. Okay, so that was in, in 2020? Yes. Okay, sorry. Are you a little bit nervous? Just a little bit. Okay. Now, um, when you first saw Ms. Dykes as a client, um, how did she present herself? How was she dressed? Um, she was dressed very conservatively. Uh, she worked for an attorney in Dallas. Um, she had long hair. Um, at the time I started doing it, it was just like highlights in her hair. Um, very nice person. Uh, we got along really well. Um, and did you learn a little bit about her family makeup at that time? I did. Uh, she talked about her uh, her kids quite a bit. Uh, she had grown kids, um, a son. Uh, she had family that lived in Florida. Uh, she had her daughter, Chelsea, who uh, ended up also being a client of mine. I actually started doing Lisa first, and then uh, soon after, she would bring Chelsea with her, and I, then I started doing both of their hair. So they'd come in at the same time. And uh, you mentioned she had some family in Florida, and then she had Chelsea and her son here in Texas with her? Yes. Okay, and were you, uh, did you learn that they lived in the Mesquite area? Um, I wasn't sure where Kyle lived, uh, but from what I understand, Chelsea lived with her. Okay, and you mentioned Kyle. Kyle's one of her sons, is that correct? Yes. Uh, did she ever talk about her other son? Not often. Okay. Um, did you know whether or not her other son, Aaron, lived with her? Um, I know she She really didn't mention him as often as she, as she did Kyle. Okay. Um, 
And as far as Kyle's concerned, did you have any idea whether or not Kyle lived with her? Or I did not. Okay, but Chelsea did live with her. She did, from what I understand. Okay, did she ever talk about her brother Jimmy? Um, if it's the brother that lived in Florida, mm -hmm. um, then she probably, like maybe mentioned him in a conversation or two, but not very often. Not very often, okay. Yeah. And uh, in the beginning, you said that she generally dressed uh, very conservatively. Um, yeah, when she'd come in to see me, it was usually on a Saturday. Um, so she always, uh, you know, dressed like casual, pretty much. Um, uh, did she have revealing clothes? Did it kind of, and you know, I hate to be like this, but almost age appropriate for her at that time? Um, or, or kind of just describe the type of conservative clothes that she wore. Well, she'd usually come like in jeans. Uh, she'd always wear, you know, like t-shirts when she'd come in. She kind of like concerty type t-shirts. So, um, yeah, you know, but I mean, most people dress like that on Saturday. So, um, it wasn't. Um, a, uh, I'm sorry. Um, you mentioned uh, her daughter Chelsea would come and have her hair done as well. Yes, ma'am. And did they seem like they were very close? Um, they were. Chelsea was quiet. Uh, I would say introverted. Um, she she was a real sweet girl. Uh, didn't talk very much. I think the only time that I could really get her to engage was when she would talk about her dog, you know. Um, so, but other than that, she really was pretty quiet. Mayor, may I approach the witness again? You may. And uh, permission to continue to approach throughout her testimony? Sure. Uh, Ms. DeLeon, I'm going to hand you what's been marked States Exhibit 83. Do you recognize that photo? That's Lisa and Chelsea. Okay. And is that a fair and accurate representation of them? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, State Offer states 83 for all purposes. No objection. All right, State Exhibit 83 is admitted for all purposes. Permission to publish, Your Honor? You may. Probably because uh, Lisa's hair is really short there. Um, so, okay. and um, well, let's kind of talk about that. Over the course, this started that your uh, client relationship with her started in 2016. Was there a time over the course of that relationship that she started talking about a man by the name of Charles Beltran? Yes. And do you recall about what year that was? Um, <clears throat> guessing maybe 2018-ish. 2018-ish? Mm -hmm. um, and that's just kind of a, a, a guess. Yes. Okay. Uh, did she tell you how uh, she and Charles met? Um, she came in one morning and basically said that she had met a guy named Chuck. Um, he uh, 
the first couple of times that, that she talked about him, she kind of mentioned kind of laughingly like it was her boy toy. Um, and then after a couple of visits, she continued talking about him. And so I finally, I was like, hey, I was like, so what is the deal with this guy? Uh, tell me about him. I was like, you know, you don't, I mean, cause she's talked about other guys in the past, but you know, just kind of like, I'm going out with this person or that person, but it was never like anything, you know, like more than like a time or two that she talked about that person. Okay. But with Chuck, she uh, talked about him for, you know, several visits. So, uh, so I finally asked her, I was like, so tell me about this guy. And she was like, well, uh, he's a lot younger than I am. Uh, he works with my son. Um, and, um, you know, and I was like, well, Lisa, I was like, that doesn't seem, you know, like, kind of like what you're used to dating, you know, a much younger guy, uh, someone who, not, not, not to say that, you know, someone who works at a bar is like, less than anyone else, but, you know, uh, I just kind of expected her to date someone more on her, I guess, like level, I guess. Okay, so more like her. Yes. Uh, a professional. Yes. Um, maybe, maybe more in her age range. Right. Um, and the description of, of Chuck was that he was a, a much younger man, and that she had met him through her son, where he worked uh, at this bar. Is that correct? About right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she talked about him frequently. Is that correct? She did. Uh, did it seem like she really liked him? Yes. Okay. Did it seem like she was pretty infatuated with him? Yes. And you kind of mentioned that, you know, you kind of thought that to be odd. Um, yes. I mean, when she met Chuck, she, she kind of started changing. Uh, but you, she came in one day and, you know, of course she had like, like longer blonde hair, always did highlights in her hair. And she comes in one day and she's like, hey, I'm ready to do something completely different. And I was like, okay, well, you know, to most people, to most hairdressers doing something different is like, we're going to put some lights in their hair, you know. Uh, but she wanted me to completely shave the sides of her head and do like a pompadour. So if, if y'all don't know what a pompadour is. Um, it's basically shaved all around the sides. You have the top that's, that's longer, you know, quite a bit longer. And you can either pull it all back, you can like wear it to the side, which it kind of looks like the picture that you just saw. She had it kind of just down and it was just to the side. But uh, when she was at work, she always just kind of like wore it like up, you know, to where it just looked like, different than that. Uh, there are other pictures of her where she has it more like in a pompadour. But I, I asked her, I was like, how are you going to get away with that at work? I mean, you know, that seems a little inappropriate uh, to do that. And she was like, oh, it's okay, you know, uh, it'll be fine. So I thought that that was like really interesting that she would go from like wearing this beautiful long blonde hair to, you know, to almost having no hair at all. Um, Did she also have it uh, colored in a, a different way? Yes. Uh, so when I ended up doing the pompadour on her, uh, she ended up going complete platinum uh, at that time. So, uh, and then occasionally she would, you know, like get a wild hair, <laughs> no pun intended, but uh, she would like want me to do like maybe a little streak of like a, a light pink or like a, a baby blue, but never anything like just outrageously crazy, you know. And when you, um, this all kind of aligned when she started hanging out and talking about Chuck, is that correct? Yes. During that time period, did you know that Chelsea still lived with her? Yes. Okay, and um, also her son Aaron, is that correct? Uh, I don't, I'm not sure about Aaron. Okay. But she, she, she never Chelsea. really, she really didn't talk about him too often. Okay. You definitely knew that Chelsea started. I did. Now, did she start dressing differently? 
She did. Um, so when she uh, when she ended up with Chuck, um, she started getting a lot of tattoos. Um, you know, she when she'd come in, she would start one sleeve, and then you know I'd see her like you know like several visits later, and she'd started another sleeve, and I would always ask her, "Why are you doing this?" How are you going to get away with this at work? I mean, you've got a conservative job. Um, you know, and, and she was just like, oh, well, you know, I could just wear long sleeves, you know. But she did start dressing, uh, like she she loved showing her tattoos off. So she would always come in like with like, uh, I guess like thinner t-shirty material uh, type shirts. Uh, they were always short sleeve because she loved showing her tattoos off. So even if it was like really cold outside, she'd wear a jacket in, but then she'd always take her jacket off. She loved her tattoos. And, you know, I mean, I'm not into tattoos, but, you know, to each his own. Uh, I know one, one day she came in and um, she kind of grabbed me by the arm. She was like, hey, come to the bathroom with me. I want to show you something. And I was like, okay. So she kind of lifts up the back of her shirt and she's got a tattoo, you know, and I was like, oh my God, Lisa, what are you doing? I mean. Where, where was this particular tattoo? On her back. On her back, okay. Yeah. Was it large? Uh, from what I recall. Okay. So we're not talking about just a little, you know, no. tattoo. We're talking about full sleeves. Yes. Um, large tattoos on her back. And this just from your time and and being yes. her hairdresser. So yes, and out. then and then she right. also uh, just make sure that you, we don't talk over each other. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, she just has to take everything down. I just can't take this at the same time. Uh, but completely out of the out of what you expected based on your experience with her. Yes, um, she also uh, come to think about it, um, came in one day and she had these little gold. They're like little dots, like across the top of her, but they were like on her teeth. And I was like, what is that? And she was like, you know, she just kind of laughed. She goes, well, don't you like it? And I was like, well, no, not really, <laughs> you know. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I, I just thought that it was all very odd that she, you know, and I, and I guess it was to impress him. I mean, he was a much younger guy. Objection, Your Honor. Uh, calling for speculation, as, and um, asking the court to instruct the jury to disregard her last statement. Sustained, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you are instructed to disregard the last answer by the witness and not consider it for any purpose whatsoever. And Ms. De Leon, um, all of this started after she met Chuck. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now. Do you recall a time, um, kind of during this time period when she's changing her hair and she's changing, you know, kind of getting these tattoos, that she came in to an appointment with Chelsea? Yes, ma'am. And uh, were the two of them both having their hair done? They were. And kind of tell me a little bit about, um, you know, that appointment that day. You know, you said that Chelsea was quiet. Uh, did she say much that day? Um, not really. I mean, I actually, this day, uh, I actually did Chelsea's hair first. I typically would always do Lisa's hair, uh, because it took a little bit longer for me to do her hair. Uh, but this particular day, I ended up doing Chelsea first, and, uh, the, the area that I worked in, it was like, my chair was here, my client sat here, my mirror was here, and then I had a dryer that was right behind me. Um, so it was like my clients had access, you know, because I, I did do like a lot of highlights. So uh, I had access to a dryer that sat right behind me. So um, I finished doing Chelsea's hair, uh, got her into the dryer, uh, started doing Lisa's hair, and um, and and let me just uh, stop you right there. So Chelsea is within earshot of this conversation. Yes, I mean literally, she's like two steps back. Okay, and uh, what did Lisa say to you? So, uh, as we started talking, um, she she kind of looks back at, 
at Chelsea. She goes, hey, Chelsea. She goes, do you want to tell Kat the news or do you want me to? And, you know, she just kind of looked at the drawer. She goes, well, I guess you can. And so um, Lisa. What, is, what was the news? Uh, Lisa uh, proceeds to tell me that Chelsea's moving to Florida. And I was like, what? I was um, like, you, you and Chelsea are so close. And, um, and I was like, why? And she says, well, she goes, I'm ready to live the life that I want and I can't do it with her here. And she said that in front of Chelsea? Yes. And Chelsea heard it? She did. Okay. Um, did she tell you where, um, where Chelsea was going to move? She was moving to Florida uh, where uh, Lisa's brother was. Now, you said that uh, she told Chelsea, I'm or tell you that I'm ready to live the life that I want to live and I can't do it with her here. Um, did she say anything else? Um, yeah, she just went on to, to tell me that, you know, because I was like just so shocked about it. And uh, she went on to tell me, she said, well, you know, Chelsea worked at, I, I can't, I don't know if it's like Disney World, Disneyland, I don't, I don't know what it is. Uh, in Florida, but she said she has friends there. She really doesn't have friends here. So to go back, you know, to be where her friends are, it'd probably be better for her anyway. I just still thought that it was very strange because, uh, you know, she and Chelsea always seemed to be like so close. I can't imagine that she would, you know, like literally like move her to, and to start living this new life with this guy Chuck. At that time, did she tell you, did you learn that Chuck was going to move in with her? Yes, yeah, she did. She actually uh, told me, you know, several visits later that, that Chuck was going to move in with her. And did you learn that she was, um, you know, buying Chuck things, uh, paying for um, Yeah, so um, she, after she moved him in, she came in one day and told me that she was buying him a lot of, um, equipment uh, because he wanted to become a rapper so um, you know so and from what she told me it was like high dollar equipment um, and I do recall seeing it there when I went to her house one day it was like uh, like in her little sun room area okay. and when she initially talked about Chuck um, did she talk at all about his rap career, or was it later when you learned that she had bought him this equipment? That uh, I really didn't know until till she told me about the equipment that, you know, he was going to become a rapper. Uh, so initially it just seemed like this was a romantic situation for her? Yes. And, you know, what did you think about, uh, what did you think about this change in Lisa and this, this new young guy and, and buying the rap equipment and what, what was going through your mind about that? I just thought it was so odd, um, you know, because, you know, I mean, we're talking, it was just like 2016, she was a completely different person, you know, she's just like morphing into, to somebody that, you know, that I, it's just, I don't know, it's just so bizarre. You know, the whole time though. Objection, Your Honor. Ma'am, you have to wait until you're asked a question. And, and sorry about the pause. Um, Ms. Ms. De Leon, I'm going to hand you what's been marked States Exhibit 84. Do you recognize all these uh, photographs? Yes. And uh, these are photographs you provided me. Yes, ma'am. Are uh, these fair and accurate representations of Ms. Dykes? Yes. Your Honor, move to, the state moves to admit states 84 for all purposes, tendering to defense counsel. No objection. All right, state's exhibit, <coughs> excuse me, number 84 is admitted for all purposes. Permission to publish, Your Honor. Yes. 
Ms. De Leon, is this kind of the, um, I guess, transition that you were talking about or the big change in Ms. Dykes, uh, where this is more around 2016? Yes. And this is more around um, kind of the end time that you all uh, have this client relationship? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And obviously the, the makeup here is very muted, long hair, like you mentioned, conservative dress, and over the course of these several pictures, um, you see, you know, kind of bright makeup, um, more dramatic makeup, tattoos, uh, different clothing styles. Yes, ma'am. Now, this particular picture here, do you recall when that was taken? Which one? Uh, this one right here, I'm sorry, with the cowboy hat. Um, I don't quite recall, but that is, uh, like, during the time that she, that her hair was, like, obviously shaved. Okay. And... This transition kind of started in 2016 and it continued throughout. Um, you mentioned that she had started talking about Chuck, buying him things, he had moved in after Chelsea left. Yes, ma'am. Was there a time that she started talking about uh, a woman by the name of Nina Morano? Yes. Okay, and who was, uh, who was Nina Morano to her? Um, she initially uh, had an appointment with me and asked if I could do her life a week earlier. She was going to be going out of town to visit an old friend of hers. Uh, Your uh, Honor, I'm going to object. Non-responsive. Uh, counsel asked uh, what or who she was, and uh, Mrs. Daly, I'm just going into a monologue. Sustained. Thank you. How did you learn about Nina Morano? Through um, Lisa just mentioning her. Okay. And um, you said you had an appointment with her, um, and she changed that appointment. What was the reason she changed that appointment? She was going to go out of town to, to see uh, Nina. And at that time, how did she, uh, I guess, categorize Nina? An old friend of hers. Do you recall about um, what time frame, maybe month and year, that she started mentioning Nina? Um, it was probably before October um, 2019, and I do recall that because I had, uh, Lisa had asked me to do her makeup for a Halloween party okay. uh, that she was having at work. Okay, let's talk a little bit about that. Um, did you usually do her makeup? I never did her makeup. And uh, you said in October 2019, she asked you to do a Halloween makeup for a party. Is that she correct? did. Okay. And did you do that in your, your regular studio, or did you go to her house at that time? Um, initially, when she called and asked me to do it, um, I told her then, I said, look, it's been a long time since I've done theatrical makeup. Um, and she says, look, I don't want anyone else touching me but you. She says, I trust you. Uh, and she, you know, was very adamant about me doing it. So I told her, I said, look, this is what we're going to do. Send me a picture of what you want. Um, you buy the makeup because I don't, you know, I don't have makeup <laughs> for stuff like that. And let's make an appointment. I'll do like a mock trial. And if you don't like it, then I'll help you find someone that will do it for you. So you went to her house to do this mock trial? No, uh, initially we did that at the salon. Okay. Uh, and then I, when, when she saw <laughs> what the results were, she actually ended up loving it. And then uh, she wanted to make the appointment uh, for me to do the makeup the day of uh, the party that her, I guess it was her uh, law firm that was hosting this party. And um, so she wanted to do it like around six o'clock. And I told her, I was like, well, we close at five. She says, well, why don't you just come to my house? Okay. So we made arrangements to do that.
And Ms. De Leon, I'm handing you uh, this is Mark State's Exhibit 85. Is that a picture of you um, applying for makeup? This was the, the mock trial that I did at work. Okay. Yes. Your Honor, State Office State, uh, State 85 for all purposes, tendering to defense counsel. No objection. All right, State Exhibit 85 is admitted for all purposes. And you said this is the trial run. Um, <coughs> was this pretty much the same makeup that you did for her for the party? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And uh, that appears to kind of be a, a skeleton face, is that correct? Um, when she initially showed me what she wanted me to do, um, I'm not really sure the name of it, it's, but it's like Day of the Dead. Is it the Day of the Dead? Dead, but it's the woman who wears like the big roses. Uh, but I didn't know that it was going to be like, I thought it was going to be like a pretty day in the dead. I didn't think it was going to be like, you know, like a skeleton. But. Okay. So, I do want to talk about uh, your visit to her house. Um, were you able to meet Mr. Beltran when you went to her house? That was the first time that I met Chuck. Uh, he was the one that opened the door. And just based on physical appearances, uh, you know, kind of what did Chuck look like? Um, he was young. Um, he wore the gauges in his ears. Uh, he was tattooed up. Uh, nice guy, though. I mean, you know, when I when he answered or when he opened the door, uh, he introduced himself that he was Chuck, and um, I introduced myself. He says, "Oh, he says I know all about you." He said, "You're the end all be all with Lisa. There's no one better than you in her book." And so I was like, well, thanks. <laughs> Where's she at? <laughs> so so that, it was a brief, uh, brief discussion or brief talk with Chuck. It was. He was nice, respectful. Yes. Uh, based on, I guess, his tattoos and everything, did you expect him to sound and talk differently? Um, kind of, but I mean, he, he was pleasant enough. Okay. Now... After doing um, the makeup for the party, you said this was a, a work party, is that correct? It was. And was this uh, going to take place at her son's bar? Or I believe so. Okay. Um, makeup turned out well, was she happy with it? She was very happy with it. After that, um, you had another appointment with her, is that correct? Are you referring to the second time I went to her house? Or? No, no, I'm talking about uh, when she started talking about Nia. Oh, yes. Okay. And so this appointment was October 2019, and then it was after that appointment that she started discussing Nina, is that correct? Yes. And the first time she discussed her, it was, uh, she's my friend and she was going to see her. Is that, yes. Is that fair? Um, in the coming appointments, did you uh, have discussions, more discussions with her about Nina? Um, yeah, it ended up being that uh, that after she mentioned Nina the first time, the next visits that I had with her, it, she only talked about Nina. Like I was going, she was going to fly here to see Nina, and Nina was coming in town. You know, it was just like everything was about Nina. So. Um, did you learn anything about Nina, um, you know, kind of her background, if she was married, what was going on with her through Lisa? Uh, yeah, she did tell me that Nina was married to uh, a man named Bill. Uh, she did tell me that he was much older than her. Uh, she told me that, that the religion that he was in was, like, super strict. Um, she mentioned that, that they always wore, like, like this long... I guess it's like a, a long, straight garment underneath their clothes. Um, so. And at some point during these discussions, did you just flat out ask her um, what was really going on there? I did. Um, after her not talking about Chuck, you know, uh, obviously it was all about her and Nina. So uh, one day, 
she came in and she told me that Neil was coming in town. And, um, and I was like, okay, so all you're talking about is Nina. Um, are y'all together? And she goes, well, yeah. And I was like, yeah, but girl, you're not into women. She goes, yeah, but Nina can give me everything that I've ever wanted. And what does she mean by give me everything that I've ever wanted? How did you take that? Uh, well, I knew that Nina was an attorney. Uh, from what I knew, uh, they had her and Bill had several homes, so I would kind of take it that, that they were probably well to do. Did you know if Bill was still uh, alive at that time? I did. Okay. Did you ever learn of his passing? I did. When did you learn of his passing? In uh, December of uh, uh, 2019. So when she uh, first started talking about Nina, Bill was still alive? He was. And then you learned of his passing uh, a couple months after she first started talking about Nina? Yes. And give me just a minute, Ms. Daly. Thank you for your patience. Um, what did you learn about his passing? Um, so, on her visit in December, um, she and I were having our regular conversations. Uh, and at this point, it was kind of, it, it was kind of like, her, Chuck, and Nina, you know, they kind of had this threesome kind of thing going on. And this is from Lisa. You're not just surmising this. No. It's Lisa telling you this. Yes. And how does she kind of describe it? <clears throat> describe? This relationship between the three of us. Um, well, you know, when, when we, uh, going back to what I just referred to, uh, the conversation that she and I had about um, uh, her and Nina being a couple. Um, and uh, so I asked her, when I asked her, I said, hey, I was like, well, so, but you're not into women. And, she, and when she replies, yeah, but she can give me everything I want. And I was like, well, so what about Chuck? I was like, you've not, mentioned Chuck in quite some time and she says well I tell Nina Chuck's not going anywhere so I kind of took it that <laughs> so you kind of took that as um, yeah, she has a relationship with Chuck and she has a relationship with Nina and uh, it's that's that's kind of the information you're getting yes now you mentioned that Nina, this is from Lisa, you know, <coughs> practiced this uh, fairly strict religion with her husband, Bill. Um, how did that change according to, and you talked about the dress, the long straight garments under her clothes and things like that. Um, I guess how, based on what Lisa told you, how did she kind of influence Nina going forward? Um, so Objection, Your Honor, uh, relevance. What? Relevance. Uh, Your Honor, may I respond to the relevance? You may. This, uh, we talked about an opening statement, and as did uh, defense, kind of opened the door to um, the nature of this relationship where uh, the state had described it as uh, a romantic between the three of them, and the defense had discussed that this was just Miss Dykes um, investing in Chuck's rap career and to lay out um, the state's case of motive um, and particularly for Lisa, we need to lay out the uh, nature of the relationship between all the parties. Can you see the attorneys? Yes, Judge.
and told you about taking Nina shopping? Yes. And did she tell you what they went shopping for? They would go to Victoria's Secret and buy things. Uh, things like lingerie? Yes. Sexy bras, underwear? Yes. And did Lisa tell you that Nina had never had those types of things before? Uh, not while she was around Bill. Now, in the beginning of 2020, that's kind of when the pandemic hit, were you still able to uh, see Lisa as a client? Yes, ma'am. And were you still able to see her? How long was it before your actual salon was shut down? Um, so when COVID started, uh, I guess they started talking about it like late February. Um, and our industry was probably one of the last ones to, you know, to be shut down. Um, so I got a phone call from Lisa saying that she was really needing to get her hair done because she didn't know how long the pandemic was going to last and, you know, she didn't want messed up hair during that time. And were you so, able to get her in for that last, that last appointment before you shut down? Yes, she came to the salon and I did her hair. And um, in that appointment, did she say much about what's going on with Chuck and Nina? Or was it discussion about other things? Um, no, I mean, at the time, uh, they, uh, can I back up to December? Uh, well, go ahead and finish answering okay. that question and we can back up. Okay. Um, she had told me that, uh, that she and Nina were planning on getting married. Um, she didn't know if they were going to have it up in uh, the New York area where one of their homes were. Um, she said that if they had it up there, she was going to fly me up there to do her hair for the wedding. Um, but they weren't sure, you know, flights and whatnot, if that was going to happen. Uh, there was a chance that they were going to have the wedding at Lisa's house in Mesquite. And after that appointment, is that when kind of COVID shut your salon down? Yes, ma'am. Uh, did you receive a call from uh, Lisa about doing her hair? I did. Um, she, she had called and uh, asked me if I would go to her home to, to do her hair because she and Nina were going to get married. Uh, the wedding was going to be at, at her house in Mesquite. And, uh, so I basically, you know, tried to follow protocol and asked her if, uh, if she'd been only working from home, if she'd been going to the office. Uh, after she said she was solely working from home, uh, I told her that I would go and do her hair. I mean, I actually had like other clients who uh, were having wedding photos done during that time, and I obliged to, to do those people and those people only, so. And um, this appointment took place in her home, is that correct? It did. Uh, did you have the chance at that appointment to meet Mr. Beltran again? Yes, I did. And uh, tell me about uh, when you saw Mr. Beltran on that occasion. Um, so when I arrived to Lisa's house, so she answered the door, and I literally could smell this amazing aroma coming, you know, from inside of her home. And so she opens the door, lets me in. And uh, she's like, hey, she goes, uh, come on to the kitchen. Um, uh, I want to hurry up and get dinner finished for Chuck. You'll, you'll be here in a little bit. Um, she was like, have you eaten? And I was like, well, no, not really. I was like, but give me whatever you're cooking. It smells amazing. Uh, so she had uh, made a fried catfish. And I grabbed a plate. I sat down, was eating. She and I chatted. Uh, and then the door opens and Chuck and another gentleman walk in. Uh, she proceeds to uh, hand them plates and, you know, she's like getting their plates done. They sit down where I was and I immediately was like very uncomfortable. Okay, and um, were you just uncomfortable because you didn't know them? What, why were you uncomfortable? I remember Chuck. Um, 
you know, and of course Lisa reintroduced us to each other, and you know, of course Chuck was like, he, he said something to the fact of uh, the queen of hair. Yes, I do remember you, basically. And uh, he was kind. He was kind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other gentleman really didn't say anything. Uh, and so it just was kind of awkward. It was very awkward. Okay. And. Yes, uh, we were going to go into her bedroom and uh, do her hair, and that's obviously where I had done her makeup, you know, the October before. Okay, I want to stop you right there. <clears throat> You're on your leave, honey. Come in. So, um, yeah, after I put uh, her bleach on her hair, uh, we were just kind of chatting. She was like, hey, she goes, um, you want to look at my wedding dress? And I was like, okay, yeah, sure. So um, we go out of her bathroom and to the right, there's a long, narrow closet. And um, so she goes in the closet, and I just kind of like leaned over, like in the doorway, you know, just kind of watching her, you know, it's kind of like this, you know, leaning up against it. And I see her walk to the to the back. Uh, she pulls out two garments uh, that were on the right side, and she turns around. She she goes like this. She goes, "Well, which one do you like better?" And I kind of laughed. I said, "Why would I think that you would have a black dress?" Okay, so she had a, picked out a black dress for the wedding. Yes, yeah, she actually had two dresses, and uh, she asked me which one I liked best, and I, I said, well, I really like this one. I said, but it's like so low cut. And she goes, yeah, I know. I'll probably pin it. Okay. Um, and when you were walking out of uh, that, I guess, that closet, uh, what did you see? So as I turn around... Um, like literally like straight across from me when I turn around out of the closet. I see um, an altar um, and it had this big statue thing that to me resembled like a grim reaper. And I completely like freaked out. I didn't want to like show how scared I was, but I just like froze when I saw it. And so, you know, she, she bumps into me. She's like, Kat, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm like looking back at her and I'm looking at this thing and I don't know what to say. And So what did you say? And so I was like, she goes, what's wrong? And I was like, and I looked at, I pointed at her. I was like, are you into witchcraft? And she goes, well, I've dabbled in it. And I, you know, just trying to get myself out of like not sounding scared or not wanting to say anything dumb. I just said, well, okay, girl, to each his own, just don't put a spell on me. And I was like, come on, we need to like get your hair, you know, shampooed out. And, and I just literally was like so afraid. I just wanted to get out of there as soon as I could. She'd never, ever mentioned anything about this witchcrafty kind of thing ever in all the times that she and I had spoken. It, it definitely had a, a profound effect on you. You were pretty scared. Yes. Um, and was that the last time you ever went to her house? It was. Uh, this was during, still kind of during the restrictions of, of COVID. When did your kind of salon open back up? 
Um, so we were out of work a couple of months. Um, <clears throat> so uh, as soon as we were able to open back up, uh, she obviously called for an appointment. I got her in and um, did she talk about Nina or Chuck during that appointment? Um, she did. Um, what did she tell you? She basically mentioned, uh, in part of our conversation, she um, told me that she and Nina had uh, <clears throat> were in a conversation and Nina had asked her what her favorite car was. And uh, she replies, she goes, well, I know what my favorite car is, but I've never been able to afford it. And uh, so, she, you know, she was like, so uh, Nina ended up getting me my dream car. And what was that dream car? Um, I was getting confused. Mas Maserati? A Maserati? Um, she told me it was black. Uh, she told me it had red seats. Uh, and she told me, she goes, she goes, yeah, I really like the car. She says, but... It had red seats, and I could not stand the red seats. So I told Nina that she needed to send the car back and have black seats put on it. And I was like, you did what? <laughs> it's like, if someone gave me a Maserati, I mean, if it was like striped polka dot, I would be okay. driving it. I wouldn't. And uh, so she tells you about Nina getting her a Maserati. Yeah. And she tells you that she Yes, I did. And was that the appointment where you met Nina? That was the first time I met Nina, yes. Okay, and what was your impression of Nina? Um, was she outgoing, loud? No, Nina, uh, you know, for her being an attorney, I thought that she would be, like, very outgoing. Uh, she was, to me, very introverted, uh, didn't have much to say. That first visit that I had with her, uh, when I met Nina, uh, was very, very short. We were introduced to each other by Lisa, and um, she was kind of quiet. Um, she basically told Lisa, she goes, hey, she goes, uh, why don't you call me? She says, I'm just going to walk around the shops, you know, and check things out. Just let me know when you're done, and I'll come by and get you. Okay, so she just seemed very quiet. Yes. Um, did, ne did Lisa tell you uh, in June of 2020 about uh, the plastic surgery that she was she did. She told me that Nina was uh, <coughs> paying for her to have plastic surgery. And um, I was very surprised because she had never, ever talked about ever wanting anything like that. And, you know, we had a lot of intimate conversations. So. And then in July of 2020, uh, we had an appointment again, and then Nina showed up this time as well. Yes, this time uh, Nina actually stayed. Um, <coughs> So, uh, you know, the way I describe where my, my working area is, um, there's a chair that faces us where, you know, I, like if, if there's someone that's with a client of mine, they always have the option to, like, sit right there where they can visit. So, yes, Nina did stay this time. Okay. <clears throat> and um, after that particular appointment, was there a time that you had an appointment with Lisa where she came in very upset? Yes. And did she tell you what she was upset about? Um, yes, that uh, she came in on a Saturday morning. Um, she told me that she had got home from work uh, Friday and that uh, she caught Chuck and Nina in bed together. And um, she, when she was telling me this, she, uh, she was like, I could just kill her. And I was like, wait, slow down a minute. I was like, You're, you sound a little aggressive here. Um, she said, she goes, yeah, she says, uh, I cannot believe that I caught them in bed together. Uh, and I told her, I said, Lisa, you invited this. You know, I was like, you have let this trio thing go on 
did you not think that it was going to happen? And, you know, after that, she, I mean, I had not really ever seen Nina, uh, I'm sorry, I never saw Lisa, like, upset. You know, she, she was always like, you know, but this particular day, she was very, very upset. And did she mention that you, you just told the jury that she was upset with Nina. Did she mention being upset with Chuck? No. Was it your understanding prior to that that the three of them were all in a, a fiscal relationship? Together? Pretty much. Um, you did her hair uh, right before her. Um, were you able to do her hair before her plastic surgery? I did. Okay. And then um, you understood that was kind of scheduled for early September, is that right? Yes. Okay. And you had an appointment with her on October 10th after the plastic surgery. Is that yes, right? ma'am, I did. And um, on that day, so her, she had had a facelift and, and a thigh uh, surgery. Yes. A thigh lift, I believe. Um, how was she moving around on October 10th? She was moving around very slow that uh, that day that I saw her. Um, um, she came in with baggy clothes, which is something that I've never really seen her in. I kind of took it that, that maybe, you know, because her body was, like, still in pain, maybe she had to wear, you know, like, loose clothes. Um, but the whole time that that I saw her on that day, she talked about the plastic surgery. Uh, she told me that she had had an infection on one of her legs and they had to put like a, I don't know, like a drainage bag there uh, because her, her leg had gotten infected from the surgery. Um, you said she was moving slowly, but she was still able to walk in? Yes. She was able to move around? Yes. And that particular day, she asked for, you know, something uh, a little different with her hair. Um, I'm showing you, ma'am, what's been marked, states exhibit 86. Do you recognize that photo? I do. Okay. And is it a fair and accurate representation of uh, her hair that day? Very much so. Your Honor, State Offers 86 for all purposes, tendering to Defense Counsel. No objection. All right, State Exhibit 86 is admitted for all purposes. And this particular day, she still has this uh, side shave and the, the kind of pompadour. Yes. Um, but she went with full on pink. She did, and I thought that that was very unusual. Um, I never, I didn't question her this time for some reason, um, you know. But but looking back at the picture now, it just I'm like, why would she even wear pink if she, you know, she's like the type of job that she has on. Okay, that's just your thinking, right? Yes. Now, did she make an additional appointment after that? She did. And. What's that um, so I typically go on vacation the week after Thanksgiving every year. Um, so I did do that. Um, the week after that, I was booked with clients, so I was not able to get her in until the uh, like the following Saturday. So. Um, and I'm not sure. What did she is. ever? Call in. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll get uh, that. Just okay. Did she ever call in and cancel that appointment? She didn't. She uh, just no showed. She just no showed, which is something that she had never ever done. The one thing about Lisa uh, is she was definitely on top of her hair. I mean, I saw her faithfully. Um, she never ever missed an appointment for anything. Um, so at the time. You know, we, we pretty much already knew that, Mar that Mary Sella was missing. Okay, you had seen the article. I did see the article. And you had seen the information about Mr. Beltran being a, a person of interest. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and 
you kind of seen in the news that maybe they were looking for mistakes? Or had you seen that? Um, I have not. Well, kind of at the same time. Uh, so uh, I have another client. Her name is Jenny. Okay. And I don't want you to talk about anything okay. that Jenny uh, okay. talked about. But right. uh, thank you, Your Honor. Sorry. Um, I guess the bottom line is it didn't shock you necessarily that she no showed in December. Well, I, you know, I was really hoping that that she was going to show up for that. Your Honor, uh, to the narrative, it's a yes or no. Just think. Were you surprised that she no showed in December? I was not surprised. Okay. And were you hoping that she would? I was very much hoping that she would. Now, uh, we talked about December 10th being Lisa's last last hair appointment with you. Yes, ma'am. was not. Um, th there was a visit that she came in and Nina was coming in town um, and uh, she was telling me that... Objection, Your Honor. Uh, accent answer. Uh, I'll overrule that objection. What did she tell you? Uh, she basically told me that um, that Nina was coming in town and she just had like this disgusted look on her face. She goes, oh, that just means I'm going to have to sleep with her. And did she have those same conversations about Chuck? Did she talk about whether she had sexual relations with Chuck and whether or not she enjoyed that? Was that a conversation you had? Um, from what, I mean, the conversations that we did have that, you know, that took place about Chuck, yeah, she always enjoyed that. Okay. Now, Yes, ma'am, it is. Okay. Um, Roger State moves to admit State 87 for all purposes entering the defense. No objection. State Exhibit 87 is admitted for all purposes. You and I sat down and talked in your home for quite some time. Um, this is not a situation you really wanted to be involved in, is it? Not at all. And something you never really thought you would ever have to be involved in. It's never happened to me in my career. You're on the task list. Cross examination. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, Mrs. Elion, I'm Valerie Baxton, and um, I'm one of the attorneys representing Mr. Dodd. So I'm going to ask you some questions and just follow up on what you were talking about with Mrs. Uh, Pittman. So um, Lisa started coming to see you around 2016. Yes, ma'am. And um, at that time, was was Lisa very overweight? She was. And um, during the period of time that she was coming to you as her hairdresser and colorist, did Lisa lose a substantial amount of weight? She lost some weight. About 60 pounds. Yes or no? Yes. Uh, enough weight where you could tell there was a real difference. Yes. Okay. And um, <clears throat> you mentioned earlier that Lisa would come in and talk about her kids, about Chelsea, her daughter who lives with her. Chelsea was an adult at this time, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So it's really not something horrible or a surprise that an adult parent would want their adult child <coughs> to live their life so the adult parent could do some things too as well. Can I answer that? I mean, 
but the way I saw it, Chelsea was very dependent on Lisa. But Chelsea was an adult. It wasn't like she was a teenager or a middle school student or an elementary student. She was well into her 20s or even early 30s, yes or no? Yes. And being a, a, a responsible parent, a good parent, you want your children to be able to function in this world without being completely dependent on you. I would hope so. So Chelsea moving back to Florida where she worked for the Disney company before, where she had friends, that wasn't really a big shock or surprise. It was to me. But that's where all of Chelsea's friends were. But once again... Yes or no? That's where her... You're yes. understanding that's where Chelsea's friends were. Yes. That she worked for the Disney company. Back in the day, yes. Um, now, as far as Lisa wanting to change up her hairstyle from going to uh, a longer hairstyle to a shorter hairstyle, <coughs> Lisa did a bunch of styles with you. She did a pixie cut. Do you remember doing pixie cuts for her? Uh, not really. Um, but as a woman gets older, it's no surprise that sometimes she may want to do something different with her hair. Most women would. Okay. So Lisa wanted to change up her hair. That was really a big shock. That was a very big shock. But Lisa had just lost a lot of weight. Maybe she wanted a, a new look. Is that possible? Yes. Um, and then you were talking about her her wanting to dye her hair pink in October. Isn't October Breast Cancer Awareness Month? Um, I have no idea, but I would not think that that would have anything to do with it. saying that I'm not aware of it. I, I've just never heard Lisa talk about, you know, uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Okay. Now, about Lisa showing you her tattoos, was she um, the one always showing them off to you, or, or did you ask to see her tattoos? Uh, they, they were always in plain sight. Okay. And when she, you said when she would come to get her hair done, she would wear like a t-shirt and jeans. Yes. Okay. And that's pretty typical for getting your hair done because you don't want, if you're getting your hair colored and things like that, you don't want to mess up your clothes. You're not going to come to a hair salon wearing afterthought or cocktail or attire or anything like that. You're going to wear something pretty basic. Yes. Correct. And most of my clients would always wear a smock over it so they wouldn't get anything on their clothes. And, um, But Lisa did talk to you about investing in Charles's rap career. She did. And so she, they had a relationship, but she also viewed it as an investment. Um, I think she did that to, to yes please no. him. Yes or no? It was an investment. I suppose, yes. Um... <clears throat> Now, you were talking about the Halloween party that her law firm was having. This would have been in October of 2019. And the, the image that she wanted, isn't that called La uh, Caterina? I'm not sure not what sure? it's called. Okay. And you weren't the one who designed the, the face makeup, the she uh, sent me a picture uh, through text message and basically wanted me to, to mock that. And that's what I was going off of. But you're the one who ultimately did the design on her face. I was. Okay. So that creation was your creation. 
It was not my creation. I was going off of the picture that she showed me. Um, yeah. Now, you also talked about um, Elisa talking to you about Nina, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you said that Lisa told you, oh, she can give me everything I want. Wasn't Lisa also talking about just companionship? She was talking financial. But wasn't she also talking about companionship? No. So, but she testified that she knew about Lisa's past relationships, yes? I knew, uh, I wouldn't even call them relationships. The only one that she really were talked about before that was her husband that she had in Florida. Well, on direct, she said that she would, that Chuck didn't seem like the type of person she would date based off of her past boyfriends or her past relationships, and I'm paraphrasing. I'm not really sure what you mean by that. So in your mind, it wasn't for companionship as well? Who, Chuck? No, I'm sorry, Nina and Lisa's relationship. There may have been a financial aspect to it, but it was also for a companionship because they were friends. Um, they were friends, but but Lisa was not into women from what she had ever, ever talked to me about. That was the first time that she... Well, let me ask you this, Mrs. Sedeleon, because how much did Lisa really tell you? Because it seemed like you, you do a lot of talking, so it would amaze me that Lisa could get a lot in with you and share things with you. And there were a lot of stories that, a lot of intimate stories that Lisa told me. Now... This altar that you said you saw in her house, in, in her closet, are you sure this wasn't in Chuck's room? No, I knew where Chuck's room was. We were in Lisa's room. And you said it was an altar, but a lot of people have altars in their homes or something set up like with maybe Our Lady of Guadalupe or something like that. This wasn't a... Uh, this, so, this, so that's, that's not what I'm asking you. A lot of people have altars in their homes. Uh, I've never really, no, I mean. Um, have you ever been in someone's home where they had an altar and there was a picture of Our Lady of Guadalupe? Not really. to you what's marked as defendant's exhibit number three. Do you recognize the person in that picture? Chuck. Okay. Chuck, uh, Charles Beltran? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Your Honor, I'm tendering to um, state. No objection, Your Honor. Would like to have this admitted into evidence, Your Honor. All right. Defendant's exhibit number three is admitted for all purposes. It is. And you met him, what, two or three times? Twice. And he looked, had this appearance both times you met him? Yes. And this made you a little uncomfortable, did it not, Mrs. Sailor Mom? Mm, yes, mainly because she had never really told me what Chuck looked like, so yeah, it kind of caught me off guard. And it surprised you that she would be dealing with a younger man? Yes. Um, who was all tatted up and in the rap in the music business or trying to get into the music business. Correct.
Now, we, uh, you testified about coming up with the Lucy Cows to do her hair, and Lisa had made um, a, a catfish dinner. Yes. And Chuck came in while you were there with another man. Yes. Well, number one, I didn't think, I thought it was just going to be Lisa and I, uh, but I, it was just the way they both looked. Um, you know, I'm not used to being around, like. Did you think Chuck was flirting with you? Or no. Not at all. Did Chuck really say much to you? Uh, he basically just said that he remembered who I was. Did the other guy flirt with you or try to talk to you? No. I don't know why he would. Did he even say hello or introduce himself to you? Um, not that I recall. And generally when you come in somewhere, you do say hello to people, you introduce yourself, even if you're not going to engage in conversations. So that's just a lot. Correct. Now, Mrs. Daniel, let me ask you, um, because you made a big deal about Lisa um, seeing a younger person, did you have an issue with Can you just repeat that? Well, you kind of made a big deal in your direct testimony about <coughs> Lisa dating a younger man. Like it, it bothered you. That was the impression that you had. And do you have an issue with women dating younger men when older men date younger women all the time? I don't have an issue with it at all. It was just the fact that. Uh, that he was literally like half her age. And I just did not think that, that she would ever end up with a guy that young. Is it fair to say, Mrs. Deleon, you're probably a more conservative person? Very much so. And you do remember that Lisa had a near-death experience, correct? Involving I don't recall. You don't remember that? I don't recall. Um, and now going to the plastic surgery that took place in September, you saw her in October. Yes, ma'am. She was. So, so she wasn't the spry person that you normally encountered? No. Um, and she did tell you she had like a major infection with this? She did. Did she also mention to you that she had um, at least one open wound on her? On her leg. Uh, I don't, she never uh, said that it was an open wound. She just said that she had an infection and that she had a, a drainage bag. Okay. okay. Yes. Attached. Yes, ma'am. I never saw it though. Okay. But she wasn't wearing jeans, though. she was wearing something pretty bad. Uh, they were baggy. Okay. I can't recall if uh, I. I can't recall if they were jeans or sweats. It was just baggy because uh, I just, uh, I never really saw her like in baggy clothes, so. I passed the witness, Sean. Can you read your right? No, you're right. Ma'am, this witness, please find me. Yes, Sean. Yes, Sean. Thank you, ma'am. If you would please watch your step and then down to the witness stand, we will go ahead and take our uh, order to break.
stop and raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Um, can you state your name for the record? Daxton Stevens. Do you go by Dax? Yes. Okay. Um, and um, where are you from? Camden, Arkansas. Okay. Um, where do you live now? Irving, Texas. Okay. So in the Dallas area? Yes. How long have you lived in the Dallas area? Uh, since like 202. Okay. So 21 years now? Something like that. Yes, sir. And uh, what do you do for work? Uh, I manage a bar in Deep Ellum. What bar do you manage? Home Permits. Okay. You said that's in Deep Ellum here in Dallas? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and it's a, a bar? Bar club, yes, sir. Um, so it's got a later opening. Not, it's not like a restaurant. It's just a bar club kind of place. Yes. Okay. Um, can you kind of describe on premise? Uh, each night is a different night. Uh, we try to give good service to all guests to come, but everybody, club, bar, club, whatever. Just a good time. Pretty mixed crowd. It's yes, sir. We cater to everybody. Okay. Um, and um, how long have you been working on premise? I think since like 2015, 2016. One of those. somewhere in there? Yes, sir. 15 to 16. Um, and where's your approach from? You may. I'm going to show you what I have marked here. States 88 through 91. Is that on premise there in 88? Yes. Okay. Uh, and then that's kind of the corner um, away from on premise. You can kind of still see on premise here. And that's Punk Society. Is that right? Yes. States 89. And then states 90 and 91 are those uh, map aerial photos of uh, the Deep Ellum area. Yes. Kind of where on premise is at. Okay. First time I'll offer states 88 through 91. I'll turn it to the for your objection. No objection, Judge. All right, states exhibits 88 through 91 are admitted for all purposes. Commissioner Bosham? You may. Start here with states 90. Uh, the map here of on premise, kind of the, the tight view. Um, it's on Elm and uh, what's kind of the cross street over here? You know? Crowdis, I think. Okay. Um, and you're right next to trees. Yes, sir. And then down here is that's the Punk Society? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, So here states 88, that's kind of the front, uh, storefront of, of on-premise there. Yes. Okay. So in your time there at on-premise, uh, did you meet um, the defendant, uh, Lisa Dykes? Yes. Okay. How'd you come to meet Lisa? Uh, at the time, her son was the general manager. And who was her son? Cal, Cal Williams. So Kyle's managing there on premise, yes. uh, and his mom is, is Lisa Dykes, and she comes to the bar or what? Yes. Okay. Um, and so you got to know her then. Yes. Do you know about when that would have been? Uh, probably 2017, 18, something like that. Okay. And uh, how was she? Nice lady. Okay. Like a mom. And um, Kyle. A good friend, yeah. Good, friend. good person, yes. Yeah. 
brand new coworker. Yes. Okay. And no issues there whatsoever. None. Okay. And um, did you come to meet the Charles Beltran there? Or yes. Okay. Does he go by Chuck? Yes. Okay. How'd you meet Chuck? Uh, he was part of security staff. Okay. He worked there as well as security. Yes. How was he as a security uh, personnel? Uh, cool guy. People okay. person. Yeah. Um, and he would just kind of work the door? Not much the door, more the inside. Okay. Um, how was he at his job? Was he good at his job or <laughs> was he focused on other things? Both, everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was good in some days and he focused on talking to me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking to who? Women. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's Chuck. He, he is the type that would talk to any woman out there at the moment. I don't say any, but yeah, he talked to a lot of me. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, any issues with Chuck or is Chuck a friend? Friend, yes. Okay. So he's another coworker and friend right there at on premise, and, and you guys all meet. Is it around the same time, 2018 ish? Yeah, yeah, somewhat, you, yes, sir. Do you meet Lisa first? Or, and then that one, I, that one I can't recall. Okay. Um, and you've got another friend uh, who's here with you today, uh, Freddie Chapman, is that right? Yes. Okay. Um, now, he doesn't work at the bar, though. No. Never has? No, has. But does he frequent hang out up there with you guys? Yes. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask you about uh, a time that you were with, uh, you and Lisa Dykes would talk occasionally while she's up there. She's yes, there yes. Okay. Um, did you ever go to her house? I have a few times. Was that by yourself or with Chuck? Uh, it was always with Chuck, okay. yeah, of course. So you and Chuck, and that would be the house in Mesquite? Yes. Okay. And um, before I get into kind of more of that, uh, was there a time where Lisa was asking you about Freddie? She asked about Freddie once or twice, yes. Okay. What was the contents, of, or what, what was she asking you about? It was more like um, trying to hang out tonight, uh, like, call Freddie if he can come hang out with me, something like that. Was she interested in kind of pursuing Freddie? Possible, yeah. It could have, yeah. Is that what it seemed like to you? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Was she wanting you to kind of connect you and Freddie for them to talk further? For the night, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, and then in hindsight, let's talk then about, I guess, obviously, uh, are you aware of her, her relationship with Charles Beltran, Chuck? To a degree, yes. Okay. Um, what were your observations of that relationship? Did he ever come out and talk about his relationship with Lisa? Not really, a little bit. Not really, though. Okay. What was that like? How would he describe it, or what were your observations of that relationship with Chuck and Lisa? Um, the way he described it with me, um, she, um, sugar mama type. Okay. Yeah. Um, would they hang out together in the bar? A little bit, yeah. Okay. Did they act like a couple, or did they just kind of be around and things were kind of normal? As if they were? Yeah, yeah, they, they, they really didn't act like a couple, no. Okay. Um, and to you, your observations and things Chuck would say made you think sugar mama? To a degree, yeah. Okay. Um, and during the time that he's got that sugar mama relationship with Lisa, is he still doing the Chuck thing with different women? Oh, um, yeah. That never stopped? Mm -hmm. No? You have to answer out loud for yes or no. No. Okay. Thank you. And um, was he the type that would try and hide his uh, efforts with other women, or was that kind of pretty out, out, out and in the obvious? Out in the obvious, yeah. Um, and so then I want to talk a little bit about October. <clears throat> Of uh, 2020. Okay. Um, it sounds like that uh, first weekend there in October, did you and Chuck take a trip? Yes. Okay. Who, tell me about that trip. Where were we all going? Uh, Camden, Arkansas. Okay. Um, so you guys take off to, to Arkansas. Uh, who all is going with you? 
Um, in the van, it was me, Freddie, Chuck, Jordan, and Brian. Okay. And did Lisa Dykes go with you? Yes, her and Nita. Nita was in a vehicle behind us. Okay. What van were you in? A run van. Okay. Who rented the van? Lisa. Okay. Um, so Lisa rents this van for you and Chuck and, and a few friends, Freddie included, to drive to Camden, Arkansas. And you guys are going for a rap concert? Yeah, a rap show for a club in you, yes. Okay. Uh, did you help set that up? Yes. Okay. Um, and was Chuck going to perform? Yes. And was Freddie going to perform? Yes. Okay. Were they the headliners? Shit. <laughs> no, no, no. No, they wasn't the headliners. Okay. Let me warn you before the judge does. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, you can you can use profanity if you're quoting someone. Yeah. Just don't use it in your own responses in court. All right, cool. So, but if you're quoting someone, that's fine. All right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and so they're not uh, headliners. So you, you, your response there. Um, from, from your, your perspective, uh, did it seem like Chuck's rap career had a chance of really taking off? Uh, no, sir. No? Okay. Um, and so you guys go, uh, you leave for Camden, Arkansas. Is it that Friday the 2nd? Yes, like nighttime, I think. Yeah, night. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you said you're from Camden. Yes. So you still have family there when you went? Yeah, my dad. Um, where was everybody planning to stay when they got to Camden? Uh, it was a hotel room. Okay. It was like two or three rooms. I can't remember. I stayed with my dad the whole time. You stayed with your dad, but there were a couple of hotel rooms. For sure, too. Okay. Yeah. And you, you went to the hotel, to be clear. Yeah, I would play a video game here and there. Okay. And at the, uh, the hotel, there's multiple rooms. Do you know who paid for those rooms? Lisa. Okay. And... Um, You've got, uh, I, I assume, I guess what's the, the room makeup? Is or is Lisa and Nina in a room? And Yeah, yeah. They was on one level and, and it was another room for sure on another level. And so tell me then about that, that trip. So the Saturday, um, everything's fine? Yeah, just hanging out, chilling. Who drove uh, the car behind you guys? Was it Lisa or Nina? I want to say it was Lisa. Yeah, Lisa. Um, and how long was that drive? At least four hours. Um, so four hours or so drive up to Camden. Um, you go hang out with family, I'm assuming, when you get there, it sounds like it's... Yes, yes. Uh, and then Saturday, you guys are hanging out, getting mm -hmm. ready for the show? Yeah. Okay. Um, everything was fine? Yes. Okay, no issues or anything like that? Correct. Okay. How'd the show go? Um, from one to ten, it was about six. How was Chuck's part of the show? About a three. <laughs> I'm being honest. Yeah. We're, uh, and let me ask you this too, right? So Chuck's not the headliner, obviously. That's not what people are there to see. Correct. There was a, a bigger local artist or regional artist. Region, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, is it something where that, that establishment is like reaching out to Chuck, saying, hey, you come perform, or did you guys have to coordinate <clears throat> for the slot? The second guy was the opener and I guess they was looking for like a they had a slot for another artist or whatever. The second guy is one of my good friends too. And um it just got set up where Chuck Young had the slot. I think it was like two to three hundred bucks for the slot. Chuck had to pay for the slot. Yes, yes. Um so it's not it, it wasn't a case of anyone was interested in recruiting Chuck to come perform, it was uh, you who made a connection to get him on the stage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and at this time, he had maybe a song or two out, I think. Yes. And then him and Freddie had a song as well. Together, yes. Okay. You don't perform with him or rap with him or anything like that? No, I ain't a rap. Okay. Um, but you had some of those connections and they were your friends and yeah, they yeah, kind of worked yeah. with us. Um, the audience, as you said, you know, Chuck's was about three, so it sounds like uh, the audience wasn't um, too into Chuck's performance. Correct. Okay. Um, you get some booze? Yeah, I heard a few of those. 
Okay, so some booze, some chuckling, probably, mm -hmm. and then uh, things turn around when Freddie gets on the stage. Yeah, that was song number two. Okay. Yes. So when when Dax and Fre or when Freddie and Chuck do a song together. Yeah, I hear people like, okay, okay. What like, did they type? Uh, my bad. Just make sure. Let me finish the question <coughs> and you answer. Yeah. yeah. Um, y'all leave Arkansas, or I guess that night. Uh, what do y'all do that night after the show? Went back to the hotel. Did you go back to the hotel and hang out for a little for bit? For a little bit. Okay. Um, but you don't stay. No, nah, I went back to my dad. Um, so you have no idea where Chuck stayed that night, from your own. Yeah, yeah, no, no idea. Okay. And uh, Lisa was was obviously there with you guys. She drove, you said, and she's at the hotel. Was she at the uh, concert? Yes. Okay. Was she hanging out, walking around? Yes. Okay. Um, was she drinking that night? Yes. Okay. Um, so she's there having a good time. Yes. Right? And. Um, are you aware that she had a surgery though, what, like a month before this? Yes. Okay. Um, do you know what kind of surgery? Uh, plastic surgery or something. Do you know where? I think it's neck, leg, something like that. Okay. Uh, did you help? Were you actually there picking her up from the, the hospital with Chuck? I went on the car, yes. I went there for sure. Okay. And um, that next day, that Sunday, did you guys you guys drove back um, on Sunday the fourth? Yes. Okay. Um, no issues at this point. No. Uh, and you drive back to where y'all when you when you drive back? Mesquite. Was that the meetup point? That Mesquite house where Lisa lived? Yeah. And um, what did y'all do from there? What was the plan? Me and Freddie Ubered downtown, because at the time, that's where I was living at, downtown. Around 7-ish, 8-ish. And then me and Chuck met back up, like, midnight. Was, so you guys Ubered. Was the plan to Uber when you got there? No, or? no, no, no. Why did you have to Uber? Uh, Chuck couldn't find his keys. His keys to his car with the black Audi? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so he can't find his keys, so you guys say, we're just going to catch an Uber and we'll figure something out later. Yeah. Okay. Um, you Uber, you said you live downtown, um, <coughs> not too far from d Valley, New York. Correct. Okay. About how far? A mile. Okay. Um, so, walkable distance from where you work and that's where you're Yeah. Living. Was Freddie staying there too? Yes. Okay. Freddie worked down there too? Yes, he was concierge. At the Manor House. Okay, and that's the apartments you live in. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you and Freddie Uber back to Manor House, and does Freddie stay with you? Stay with me? No, no. No, I mean not that evening. You nah, he go. With Chuck. He go to his place, and I go to my place, and then me and Chuck went back up. And Freddie's gone at that point. Right? Yeah, yeah. And so we're talking October fourth in the evening hours. You said seven. Eight. Yeah, somewhat like that. Okay. Pretty quickly, did you and Chuck meet back up? Yes. Okay. Um, what do you think? What time are we meeting? Y'all meeting up? I presume he bellums? Yeah, uh, he picked me up. Okay. In the Audi? Yes. Okay. So October 4th, uh, Sunday, he's picking you up in the Audi, and then are y'all going down to Deep Ellum? Yes. Okay. Is that where y'all typically would hang out? For the most part, yes. Okay. And so... That Sunday, you uh, it's evening. You head down to Deep Ellum in Chuck's Chuck's vehicle. Uh, where do you go? Uh, we went to Deep Ellum, and the first spot we went to was Punk Society. And that's right here in the corner. It states ninety, and then here in eighty nine. Uh, yes. If you kind of zoom in, you can see the sign say Punk Society there. Yeah. And that's just a couple. Uh, kind of businesses down or bars down from on premise. Yes. What did y'all do at Punks? We went in maybe for like 10, 15 minutes. And uh, we had a drink or two. 
And then um, we seen his um, baby mama. Who's baby mama? Uh, Chuck. Okay. And then you know name? Jasmine. Okay, so Jasmine, Chuck's baby mama. Yeah, she come in. Together? No, I don't think so. Okay. Did you see her come in? What, what's y'all's reaction to seeing her walk in? Shit, we gotta go. We went through the back door. Okay. Yeah. So there's a back door to, to Punk? Yes, yes. Through the kitchen and all that. Yeah. Okay. And you kind of see here, uh, most of these permits, all of these or at least on premise, you have a back door, patio area, and you can get out that way as well, right? Yeah, most of them like that. Okay. Um, and so Jasmine walks in right here. Yeah. You and Chuck say, no, we don't want that, and we go out the back. Yes. Okay. Uh, Chuck kind of avoiding Jasmine then, it seems. Yes. Okay. Where do y'all go next? Uh, we went in front of Pump Society and went across the street. So out here? Yes, sir. And then back over to this side? No, no, right there, that side. This side? Yep. So over here by Rodeo Dallas? Dada. Right, that's Dada right there. Okay. Yeah, that's where we was at. Dada right here? Yes. Okay. What do you guys do over there? Did we, you go into the establishment or hang out? No, no, no. They weren't open. We were just talking, and then a few minutes later, his baby mama came out. Chuck. Then they all walked on the side of Rodeo. At the time, it was with 10. So Jasmine and the people she's with go down this way? Yeah, and we saw them, yeah. And y'all are hanging out, just posted up outside? Yeah, 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 smoking cigarette talk. Okay. Um, any issues with Jasmine at that time? No, no, no. Okay. And, um, but her people just walk on by? Yes. Okay, what happens next? Um, Chuck was like, man, look at that girl. It was a lady. Walking in front of Pump to like Brick and Bones. And then she came across the street and we both spoke to the lady and she went to Chuck. So she's on this other side of the street? Yeah. On this walking side. across, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then she, so Chuck notices her, she's walking across that side. Yeah. And yeah. then you said she crosses back she over. She crossed the street and came down towards us. That girl was Maricel Bacup. Correct. Yes. And so Maricel is crossing the street. Chuck says, hey, that's a pretty girl. Yes. Come along those lines. Um, and then she comes over to you guys. Yes. Okay, what happens then? We both like, hey, how you doing? And she went to Chuck. Okay. Her and Chuck talk three to five minutes. Uh-huh. How was that conversation? I really wasn't paying attention, but they were giggling and, you know, talking. Okay, so it seems positive. Yes. You said you hear giggling. Yeah, yeah. Um, did it seem flirtatious between the two of them? Correct. Okay, and it was quick, you said. Three to she, five minutes. She walks over after you guys seen her pass, three to five minute talk. Yes. And body language wise, it seemed like they're both kind of flirting. Correct. Okay, what happens next? Chuck was like, I'm about to roll, huh? Cause that's what they call me, cause of my old head. Um, I'm finna go with her. I like cool. So they went between Brick and Bones and Punk Society, that uh, alley, that it's little, it's little yeah, park. right there. And Chuck was parked on Indiana Street. Uh, behind the trees area, like that part right there. So somewhere back, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's in that parking lot that's just right there behind the trees and punk and on premise. Yes, sir. Okay. And him and Maricela walk that way? Correct. Um, everything seemed fine? Seemed fine to me. That seemed something you'd seen Chuck do before? Yes. Okay. Um... And so he goes away. Do you think he's coming back at some point? Uh, nah, nah, nah. You you assumed he was gone for the, the evening at this point. Yeah, it was out. It was like one o'clock. 
115 or something. Any calls or texts from Chuck after that? That that night? Uh, no, like I called him like, I would really try to get a ride back home, but he didn't answer, so I went back in Punk Society. Okay. Yeah. Did you hang out at Punk's for a little bit? Yeah, about 10, 15 minutes. Okay, how'd you get back home? I walked on. You said it's a mile or so? Like a 12, 15 minute walk. Okay. And uh, you get stranded there, your, your friend that drove you here, <laughs> yeah. Chuck did you back, he's off. He's now found a girl that he's going to take back to his car, and they're gone. Correct. You don't know where they go. Correct. Uh, and you didn't hear from Chuck again that evening. No, I didn't. When's the next time you saw Chuck? The next day. Okay. So, in here in State Spot, right? Sunday night, you're out. Yeah. Chuck leaves with, and that's, I guess, going into the early hours of the, the 5th. Uh, of October, you know, like you said, 1 a.m. or so, and him and Maricel are leaving. It's later, hours later on the 5th, sometime in that morning, that yeah. you see Chuck. Where at? At your house? Yes. Okay. Like 11 or noon, around that time. Okay. Um, so, late morning or around noon? Correct. And how was Chuck when you saw him? Normal, like regular Chuck. What he said? Did you ask him about the girl? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, man, why was that girl last night? And he was like, he was nonchalant. I'm like, man, nothing really. Just got some head. Went to the store, got some mixers. Then got some head or whatever. Messed around. Just, just his words. And then um, he dropped her off because she wouldn't let him take her back to the hotel. And he just dropped her off by like Baylor. So he says they had some kind of sexual encounter yeah. with each other, that they bought mixers together, and yeah. that he couldn't go to her, her hotel. Yeah, they messed around in the car. And they just dropped her off somewhere in that city. Yeah, correct. Did anything seem, or did you press on that story, or did that seem like it would potentially be true based on what happened yeah. at the time? Yeah, it seemed like it would be true. So you had no reason to question at that time? Correct. Uh, and then you guys hang out for a little while or? Yeah, a little bit that day. Okay. How long? I can't really recall, but I'm sure a few hours. Okay. Um, and I guess he eventually leaves. Do you know where he's going after that? Uh, no. Okay, did you hang out with him that evening? Maybe so. That, that evening, yeah, then the next day, the next day, the next day. The next day. So y'all hung out kind of this whole week here. You all you all are hanging out? For the most part, yes. Either where are you guys hanging out at? My crib, D Bell, strip club, something. Okay. And when's the last time you see Chuck? I can't really recall, but um I see him like every day until like um Maricela pictures start coming up being a missing person. Do you remember when you started seeing her pictures come up? Not really. I can't recall. Okay. But I know at least a week, or eight days, nine, something like that. Somewhere up in there. Man. About a week you start seeing her pictures start really getting blasted. Yeah. Okay. And then I got phone calls about uh, detectives popping up their own premise and all that type of stuff, asking about you. Um, did you talk to detectives? Yeah, I talked to several. Obviously, you were with Chuck whenever he sees Maricel and leaves Maricel, so people want to talk to you and just see community. Yeah, correct. And you were cooperative, cooperative oh, with yeah. him? Yes. Okay. Uh, much like you've been with, with Ms. Pittman and I, where we've, we've asked you um, multiple times about what's, you know, what you know about this. Yes. Okay. Um, and <clears throat> the FBI or detectives, that's kind of after you start hearing about the, uh, the news articles and her face getting kind of Posted everywhere? Yes. Okay, so we're thinking maybe you know, this week of October or this week of October? Oops. Yeah, something like that. Okay. So maybe the week of the 12th, maybe the week of the 19th, somewhere in there you start getting... Yeah, something like that. Okay. Uh, does the, the folks that work down in Deep Ellum or frequent, you know, your, your, your spots that you like to hang out, do they start to talk? Yeah, they start asking me questions. Me and Freddie. So people are starting to wonder what's going on. Yeah, because we with Chuck almost every day. Okay. 
and um, Chuck, he had that black album. Yes. Um, that week when you guys start hanging out again after the October 5th, does he change cars? Yes. Yes, for the most, yeah. yeah. What car did he start driving then? Um, the white SUV. Did you know whose white SUV that was? Lisa's. So he started to drive Lisa's at white SUV instead of the Audi. Had, had he always been driving the Audi before this? When he'll switch up. It? He'll switch up. He'll switch up cars. And um, so when's the last time you saw Chuck then after that? Uh, I don't know exactly the, the last time I've seen him, but when i seen the pictures and all that, I was like, man, that's that girl. And I called him. I was like, man, and then when they called me, the the chef at the time on premise called me and said they was looking for Chuck. Then I called Chuck to tell him, man, they coming through on premise looking for you about this girl. I was like, I ain't playing either, man. He was like, I know. I was like, man, I don't know what to do. What you gonna do? I don't know what's going on. And I was like, I'll talk to you later. I never heard from him again. Did he give any explanation? No, 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 no. no. Um, so at that point, you're still thinking, he dropped her off somewhere, and we don't know what happened. Correct. Um, and so, you probably talked with Chuck sometime the week of the 12th, then it sounds like? Possibly, yeah. I know for sure we hung out that week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So, yeah. Was, yeah. Chuck, was Chuck going harder than normal? Uh, yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Y'all just spent a whole weekend together. I know. Yeah, we had no time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and then he leaves. Was was Chuck active on social media? Yeah. Yeah. Before before all this, he was active on social media. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then when he leaves, what happens with his social media activity? Uh, he kept. I guess he died out for a minute on it, and then throughout the process of him missing, he was posting. Old videos. He would post old videos. Yeah, have some videos he would post and like some stuff he saved. Okay. Yeah. And he would he post it as though it was happening then. Though. Yeah, yeah, correct. Um, and um, you would see that you saw those posts that he was posting. And, you knew and it hear about it too. Like anything he did, I got phone calls every day. Um, and how would you know they were old videos? Were they stuff that you would have been there? Yeah, yeah, some of them I was there, and I remember the night and all that type of stuff. Okay. Yeah. Passwords. Proximity. Um, <coughs> sir, <coughs> okay, you said that uh, he was pre posting stuff, and anything he would do. Phone calls because I'm gonna move on this side because I can't see you. Okay. Um, basically, that uh, people were contacting you because you now you can't see. I got you. <laughs> switch with me, switch with me. I'm sorry, sir. Because uh, I mean, everybody knew Dex. I mean, Uncle Dak, right? That's what Chuck called you, right? Yeah. A lot I think Chuck, I mean, Charles Beltran. Uh, Chuck 5050, right? That's what we talking about, right? Yes, sir. I mean, that's his rap name, or that's what he had on his IG, or uh, rap. You know what the 5050 was, right? To a degree, yes. Half amazing, half crazy, right? Correct. All right. And um, when we talk about Chuck, you know, the fact that he, um, he liked women, right? Correct. Good and manipulate women, women. I don't know about that, but he was good with the ladies. Yes, sir. He was a womanizer, wasn't he? Hey, they loved him. Isn't that what he rapped about? I I, I never really listened to it. Come right on, Chuck, you heard... Dax, Dax. I mean, Dax, you yeah. heard uh, Picture Me This? That, just that part, because that's the only thing you can what, listen to. What was SOS? What does SOS mean? SOS. Some on site or something. Straight on site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. a song... Um, I think him and Freddie got together. Yeah. What about uh, person of interest? You ever hear person of interest? Person of interest. Yeah. Okay. That's after Miss Valdez uh, ended up missing, correct? Yes. Person of interest. 
but with some called person of interest after all this popped off, right? That one I can't recall. Okay. Uh, but let's be clear. As far as your relationship with uh, Mr. Beltron or Chuck 5050, um, I think you indicated that you guys kind of work together, right? Yes. And then that relationship kind of built to more of a friendship. Would you agree with that? Yes. Would you consider him a friend? Yes. Because right. he thought highly of you as well, right? Yes. All right. And as far as uh, Miss Lisa, um, all you guys are friendly with each other. Would you agree with that? Yes. All right. Uh, including her son, Kyle. Yes. Right? Um, you've been over to the house. Yes. Right? Um, as far as what happened to this girl, you have no idea, do you? No. All you know is what, what uh, Chuck told you, right? Correct. And do you remember talking to the police about what Chuck told you? Uh, I talked to several. Okay. Um, but you... <laughs> Okay. Now, question. You remember when uh, Marcella, I guess, uh, initially walked by you guys, right? She, in it, first, she walked by y'all, didn't she? Across the street, yes. Okay, at some point, she actually came up to y'all, didn't she? Correct. Uh, and had a conversation with, with, with Chuck, right? Yes. And uh, was she talking to him about getting some weed? Uh, possible. Three years ago. Let me show you a uh, photo. Uh, is this how Chuck was dressed that night when yes. Ms. Valdez came up and approached him? Yes. In fact, that's them, right? Yes. That's how they appeared back in October the, was it the 4th of 2020? Yes. All right. Uh, Mr. Harris, if you could detail what picture that is. I'm, I'm, I just showed you uh, defense warrant. And now I'm showing you defense three. And this is how um, Chuck, you also called yourself Chuck Gorgie, didn't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but this is Chuck 5050, right? Chuck, yes. In fact, he got the 5050 tattoo on his neck, don't he? I think so. Okay. Um, so I want to talk to you about what you told the police you were called of um, Chuck. And Marcel told at least what he told you. Yes. Uh, he specifically told you that he had sex with her in the car that night. You remember that? Something like that. It was either sex or something. Yeah. Okay. And uh, after that, he told you that he dropped her off at, at, at an unknown location, right? By Baylor or whatever. Yeah. Okay. That's it. That's the last he saw her, right? Yes. Right. Now, let me ask you before this night. Uh, Chuck with this girl. Uh, had he ever said anything about Miss Dykes being jealous of him with women? No, nah, no. Nah. Because everybody knows Chuck is a ladies' man, right? For the most part, yes. She knew Chuck was a ladies' man, didn't you? Yes. You saw his video. Did you ever see his video? Uh, 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 that in the picture of this? Yeah. It's actually at her house, isn't it? Yes. With some strippers, right? Yes. He's actually performing sex on the video, isn't he? Just if you remember. Some, yeah, they were doing some, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the shot, the fact that he was a womanizer who liked women, that was no shock to her, correct? Correct. And uh, again, I want to make sure I'm clear, you hung out with him almost every day, right? Going yes, no time period, yeah, 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 yes, sir. Never said one thing about her being jealous of 
him taking women over to her house, right? Correct. Uh, because, well, well, let me ask you this. Uh, you know Carmen? Did you know Carmen? Yes. Yes. Now, that was another one of Chuck's girls, right? Yes. Now, Carmen didn't live with uh, Chuck and Lisa, did she? No. He lived with her at another apartment, didn't he? Yes. <laughs> but that was one of his girls. Yes. And of course, he had his baby mamas, right? Yes. And I say baby mamas because he had more than one baby mama, right? I think like two. Okay. Um, <coughs> I want to ask you specifically about this time period after, um, I guess, which would, I guess, be October the 5th. Uh, well, oh, oh, I want to make sure I ask you also. You said that y'all were out after the trip to Arkansas, that y'all were over, y'all went back over to uh, Ms. Dykes' home, and uh, you and Freddie had the Uber back downtown? Yes. About how much that, that, that cost? 20 something bucks, 18, something like that. Okay, 18, 20 dollars, okay. Um, the trip to <coughs> Arkansas to perform at the rap show, uh, are you sure that uh, Lisa was driving and not me? I'm pretty sure. Why? Lisa, because they were behind us. Okay. Then we stopped at a gas station I met up to when we got gas and stuff. Um, but during that time period, you, you knew that she had the surgery, right? Yes, yes. Right. yes. Uh, did you know that she was taking medication for the pain from the surgery? Just a few minutes. I'm sure, yeah. <coughs> uh, at some point, y'all get back and Chuck can't find his keys? Yes. All right, but eventually he had to find the keys to the Audi because he ended up back down in deep down, right? Correct. <laughs> and I guess uh, earlier they were asking you about uh, Miss Dykes. I guess uh, wanting to pursue Freddie. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, Y'all in club atmosphere, right? Yes. Women come down there trying to pick up men, don't they? Yes. Men come down there trying to pick up women, right? Yes. Older men pick up younger women. Right? Yes. Younger older women pick up younger men, right? Yes. That's club life, right? Yes. You find, uh, I mean, Freddie didn't bite, right? Nah. nah. Oh, but Freddie is a nice looking guy, right? Decent dude. Decent looking. <laughs> I mean, he's not Uncle Dax, but. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, Lou, I'm sorry, Mr. Dax. I'm moving on. Yeah. Uh, but again, as far as Chuck being a woman's man and, and, and trying to come on to women, uh, that was nothing unusual, right? Correct. All right. And there was no secret to, to Miss Dykes, right? Correct. All right. Um, when you saw him on October the 5th. Yeah. Did he act as if anything unusual had happened? I had to know him, I mean. Did he ever say anything about uh, Miss Dykes or anything happening at uh, Miss Dykes' house? No. Do you have any indication that anything had went crazy with uh, Miss Valdez? No. Y'all hung out for about a week, and then at some point he stopped answering his phone, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, did you call his sister, or did his sister call you concerned? Uh, I can't really remember, because I met his sister like a month or two before all this happened, but we did talk, yes. I met his sister. Okay. Um, and his phone going off happened after Mrs. Valdez's uh, 
pictures start getting posted up down that deep elm area, right? Correct. Okay. But as far as you, someone who hung around with almost every day, he never said anything about um, any negative incident that would have happened with Miss Audet. Correct. In fact, he told you just the opposite, didn't he? He told me what he told me, yes. So he dropped her off. They had sex, he dropped her off. Yes. He never even told you he took her back to uh, Mesquite, did he? Correct. He was specific in where he had sex with her, wasn't he? Yes. In his car. Yes. That blackout. Yes. Not at the house of Mesquite, correct? Correct. You, somebody hang around with every day, right? Yes. Any reason for him to lie to you? Shouldn't be, yeah, no. You don't know whether he was lying or not, do you? No. Hard to tell when he's lying, isn't it? Correct. And you say SOS is straight on site, right? That was a song, yes. Straight on site, that means straight on site. When I see you, it's on, right? It could be SOS, it could be anything, man. I don't know. I'm not a rapper. I don't know nothing about that. But in the context, you heard the song Straight On Sight? Yeah, I heard the song, yes. In the context that they're using Straight On Sight, that means when I see you, it's on, correct? Correct. And from the rap song, I'm saying From the rap song, yes, their correct. Their yes. song. Yeah. If you listen to the lyrics of their song. Correct. Now, if this jury listens to the lyrics, they can form their own whatever opinion they want to, correct? Correct. But when you listen to it, Straight on sight means it's on when I see you, correct? Yeah, correct. And do you remember any of the lyrics from the uh, picture me this? Yeah, Women on my dickity dick. Yeah, right? yeah, I'm about to say it like smooth. Cartoons too. Smooth, yeah. Gangster rap stuff. I ain't going to say that with gangsta, but yeah. Okay. Did you know the, the lyrics from the uh, person of interest? Just a few minutes. Um, no. But you are certain that he told you somebody hanging around with almost every day that he had sex with her in the car. Yes. Never said nothing about having sex with her at the house. Correct. Now you've been to their uh, uh, to that house in the seat. Yes. Uh, did he have an altar out there? An uh, altar. Yeah. Just if you know, if you don't know, what's an altar? No, I don't know nothing about that. Okay. So you don't know nothing about no type of altar or nothing like that. Correct. Okay. <coughs> Did you ever meet uh, Miss Nina? Yes. Okay. And again, even with uh, Nina, he never said anything about Nina being jealous of him either, with other women, did he? No. And as far as um, his want to be rapper career, <laughs> As you would, I guess, phrase it. Yeah. Uh, she was financing it, wasn't she? Yes. She bought him a studio, didn't she? Yes. And whether you believed in him, she did, didn't she? Yes. Or it appeared that way, did you? Yes. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Depp. Appreciate it. Well, then we're going to go ahead and break for lunch, and it's 1239. Uh, I expect you back in the uh, jury room no later than uh, 145. We are at recess. All right.
Oh, yes, Judge Reddy. All right, so you are still under oath. All right. You may proceed, Speaker. There was some talk about uh, Chuck's rap lyrics side to side, so the things we rap about. Is that Chuck? You see that person? You see this person that's violent, aggressive? No, sir. Okay. Um, clearly, he's rapping about it, but I'm just saying, in your interactions with him, I mean, how do you describe the kind of person Chuck is? It was a <clears throat> nice dude, respectful, and a ladies' man. That's it. And, uh, and, and as far as talking about his relationship with Lisa Nina, would he have, it sounds like you said that you guys didn't really talk about that. Correct. Um, so you wouldn't have been being told anything about what's going on with Lisa jealousy or anything like that. Like that's just not something y'all would have ever talked about. Correct. I'll pass on this. If he felt Lisa was jealous, he would have told you. You were his boy, wasn't he? Weren't you? Yes, sir. All right, and uh, all this uh, Chuck the nice guy, did you know that Chuck was a felon? I knew he went to prison. I don't know what part or nothing like that. So you didn't know he went to prison for aggravated robbery? No, sir. Does that sound like a nice guy to you? No, sir. And again, when you talk about 50-50, this nice guy self-proclaims himself as half amazing, half crazy, doesn't he? In lyrics, yes. In lyrics? In life. Yeah. It's tattooed on his neck. 50-50, right. half amazing, half crazy. This nice guy. Right? I didn't see the tattoos on his neck, so I don't know. But you know, what? are you familiar with what you said earlier? You, you saw his uh, social media page. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. On his social media page, it says <clears throat> Chuck 50-50, does it? Yes, it do. And did you know, as far as, you know he had a baby mama in, in Austin, right? Yes. And, but he couldn't see his kids because he assaulted her, correct? No idea. But you did know he went to prison, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think you told the members of the jury you didn't know nothing about uh, this Santa Morta, right? Correct. By him having an altar at... Uh, there at Miss Dykes' house. Correct. That's all I have to Nothing further than the state, Your Honor. All right, may this witness be finally excused? No objection. No objection, Your Honor. All right, sir, you're free to leave and go about your business. Please watch yourself. Thank you. Call your next witness. The state would call Frederick Chapman, Your Honor. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in this case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall help you, God? I do. Thank you. Please have a seat in the witness stand. Watch your step. That's fine, sir. Yeah, that's fine. Here you go. All right. Keep up your seat. May I approach Gresson? Uh, take your turn. Do that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Is there any Kleenex there you can put it in? No, ma'am. Uh, if you could hand him a Kleenex, Mr. Mr. Brown, thank you so much. That's all right, I'm a gum chewer as well. So all right. right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. 
Yes, Frederick Chapman, F R E D E R I C K. Chapman, S H A T M A N. Sir, you go by Freddie? Yeah, I go by Freddie. Freddie, where are you from? I'm from Dallas, Texas. Born and raised? Born and raised. What do you do for work? Um, right now, party promoter, entrepreneur, artist. Um, back in 2020, where you work in? Uh, At the Manor House, Concierge. All right, Mr. Chapman, if you could please. Um, I know that's how you conver have a conversation with somebody, but I need you to wait until Mr. Brown is completely finished with his question and then answer because Mrs. Garza is taking down the record and all the testimony. All right, got it. Thank you, sir. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. So, uh, you said now you're doing some of the promoting and, and entrepreneur. Yes. Okay. Um, you also do music, make music? Yes. You rap? Yeah, I rap and write music as well. Okay. How long have you been doing that? Pretty much all of my life. I would say take it serious maybe around 19. Okay. Off and on. And you've recorded songs and Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit more too, but uh, let's talk about uh, Deep Ellum. You're familiar with the area here, Dallas? Yes. Okay. You go out in that area sometimes? Uh, a lot, yes. That's your typical hangout spot. Definitely. Okay. Um, uh, the establishment on premise here in States 88. Yes. Is that a place that you've frequented quite a bit? Yes. Okay. Uh, tell me a little bit about on premise. Um, well, it was Dak Steven. He was the head of security at the time that all of this was going on. But on premise, it's good vibes, mixed crowd, nice music. Sometimes they have food. And um, you talked about Dax, he was working security. So when did you start going to uh, on premise? Is that how you met Dax? I met Dax at another club um, at Punk Society that's in Deep Ellum as well. Which is just a couple. Few blocks. Well, right. a few businesses now. Yeah. Right. And uh, so you met him at Punk's and, um, and then start hanging out with him. He's working at on premise. Yeah, that's what he told me. He told me to come by there. Came by on premise, and yeah, that's kind of what a friendship built up. We had a mutual friend as well. Were you already working at Manor House at the time? Yes, I was. That, that's where he was living, is that right? Not at that time. This was many years ago before he, before I started going on premise, and he moved in. Okay. Eventually, you were working at uh, Manor House, living there, and so he was living there as well, right? Yeah, he was on the uh, 17th. Uh, but y'all had your own apartment. Yeah, we lived separately. Um, just and so uh, you met Dax. You started uh, going on premise. Did you ever get a chance to meet um, Kyle Williams? Yes. Okay. Who was he? That is, he was the GM at the time, which is Lisa's son. Okay. And then so did you meet uh, her mom or his mom, Lisa? Yeah, I met her. Just she was basically popping in and popping out over there. Um, and so would you see her there at on premise? Occasionally. Did you ever talk to her? Yeah, spoke with her. Okay. Um, and let's talk about, uh, how'd you meet Charles Beltran or Chuck? So being that I would go to the clubs so often, he was doing security, kind of running to him, speak. Um, him and Dax had a real friendship at the time, so that's kind of how the friendship began. Okay. Um, and was Chuck was into, into music as well, he was into rapping. Yeah, he was into music, dressing. Women, you know, same thing that I was into. Okay. And uh, you guys eventually recorded together, is that right? Yeah, we did a song together. And um, I went back up a little bit to the times you've met Lisa. Was there a, there was a time that you saw her at a Halloween party? Yeah. So uh, Dex gave me a call and told me to, um, yo, man, come up to on premise. Lisa, she asking about you. She want to see you. And I was like, what? All right, cool. So I pulled up to on premise, went in. He told me. On, your point on premise was on premise open to the public? No, it was a private party. Okay, and that private she, party was it? Yeah, that she had rented out, I guess, for her business. Her company rented it out or something. But yeah, it was a Halloween party. So I go in, go to the bar, talk to Lisa. She kind of flirted with me heavily. But she always was kind of flirtatious a little bit. That's kind of her general. Yeah, her energy is pretty strong. Okay. And uh, 
how'd that how'd that interaction go while you, while she's kind of flirting with you? Well, her face was painted kind of like a skeleton a little bit, I guess, with the costume she had on. So I was kind of taken back a little bit. I guess just the energy, I don't know, was kind of off for me. It's kind of off? Yeah, it was okay. kind of off for me. Um, and was she trying to have you hang out some other time? Yeah, she kind of told me um, like a proposition, like, you know, anything you want, I can make happen. I see your vision, those type of things. So. Okay. Um, and you played it cool or shot her down like that? I just played it cool. I didn't take her up on the offer. I'm kind of like, yeah, we'll talk, but... You never followed up on it? No, nah, I didn't follow up on it. Okay. So then, uh, how do you find out uh, about Lisa and, and Chuck? Well, I guess like a few weeks later, that's when um, they was in the parking lot of the building. Of Manor House? Uh, Manor House, yeah. Okay. And um, I stepped out. He was talking with Dax. Dax was talking with Lisa as well. Nina was there. That was my first time meeting Nina. And... Um, Chuck had a black Audi, and that's when Dax was like, well, that's supposed to be your Audi. I'm like, what do you mean? He was like, that's Chuck's new Audi, he released it. And that's why I was like, oh, okay. That's kind of how I found it. I was like, I guess he took the offer. Yeah. And how was uh, Chuck with Lisa and Nina? Um, that day is, which normally is kind of casual. Like, they in public, they don't really act like they're together. But on that day, I seen them kiss Nina and Lisa, so I was like, oh, okay. So he kisses both of them that day in front of yeah. you and Dax. In front of Dax, yeah. Um, but that was out of the norm in terms of public displays of affection. Correct. Um, and did you and uh, would you and Chuck talk? Would he talk to you about uh, his relationship with Lisa and Nina? Not really. Okay. It really wasn't a conversation. It really never was like a conversation. Like, yeah, I'm doing this and doing that. It kind of was unspoken. Like we all knew. And what, what did you all know? What was that relationship to you that you could see? That it was kind of like the uh, young boy or the woman, she had money, taking care of him. The sugar mama aspect. Yeah. Okay, so no, the sugar mama aspect of the relationship. Right. Um, and um, he had, uh, Chuck had rap equipment, like the studio in his, uh, the house that he shared with uh, Lisa. Yes, in one bedroom it was like a painted, basically like a whole studio setup, painted you, wall, laptop. You recorded? Yeah, I recorded that. Okay. So what all was in there? Again? Uh, laptop, speakers, <coughs> microphone, basically like a studio setup, kind of like a lounge area, not a bedroom or nothing like that. Pretty much like made like a studio. Room. And in like the closet, did it have the actual soundproofing kind of fabric to go in there? Yeah, it did. Okay. Um, so I mean, it was totally transition to allow you or Chuck and whoever was going to come record with him to record songs. Yes. Um, and in that house, uh, did Chuck have his own bedroom separate from Lisa? That I don't know. I know that he had multiple bedrooms, so, but I will say it did look kind of, the whole place kind of looked like a bachelor pad, pretty much. Okay. Um, and then ultimately, uh, in October, we start talking about October of 2020, you, um, my understanding is you took a trip with uh, Chuck that first week in October, is that right? Correct. Um, you guys go to Arkansas, was it on, a, it was on this Friday, October 2nd, 2020? I think it was, sorry, was it, yeah, it was Friday, because the show was on Saturday, and we came back Sunday. So you guys take off on a Friday, and you're going to Camden, Arkansas, is that right? Yes. Okay. What's the plan when you get there? You got a show. What's the, the plan for the show? Uh, we got a show with an artist, well-known artist. So we was going to, um, I guess when we first went there, we checked out the club, talked to the um, owner, and um, just checked out the space. Seen, we picked the section where we'll be at, and uh, yeah, it was kind of... Who all went on this trip? It was me, Dax... Chuck, of course, uh, Jordan, and Brian, and also Lisa and Nina. Okay. Uh, how'd you all get there? We was in a Sprinter van, and they followed behind us. They being? Who? Lisa and Nina. They drove together. They drove separately? Yes. And do you recall who was driving their car? I want to say Lisa, but I can't really confirm who was really driving. How long was that drive? I think it's like four to five hours. Okay. And... Um, 
you all get there on Friday night, show Saturday. Is Lisa coming around with you guys kind of everywhere you're going? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Uh, you guys go to the show that, that it's in the evening, I would imagine. Is it was on um, Saturday night. Yeah, Saturday night. And how the show go? Uh, the show went pretty well. I think um, Chuck's performance wasn't that good in the beginning. Maybe he was nervous, you know, um, didn't really practice, I guess, or something. And then our song came on, the crowd kind of reacted, he got into it a little more. And he performed one song kind of solo, and then the two of you performed the song together. Right. And that was it. So basically, two songs set for Chuck, one song set for you. Yeah. Uh, and then there's a headline act that was going to perform after you guys. Correct. Okay. Um, and while you guys are out that evening uh, for the Trap concert, Lisa Dykes was there with you? You mean out and about or? At the club. At the club, the yeah, she was there. Was she drinking that night? I can't oh. recall. <clears throat> okay. um, were you drinking that night? Um, I had a few drinks. So. Nothing crazy though? Nothing crazy. Just a social drink every now and then. And after the show, where do you guys go? Uh, we went back to the hotel. I kind of just chilled, hung out, and uh, that was it. I think one of Dak's friends pulled up on us. We talked to him for a little bit. And yeah. And where were you guys staying? You had a hotel? Yeah, we was at a hotel. How many rooms? Uh, so it was two rooms, and then they had a suite that was downstairs for Lisa and Nina. So Lisa and Nina had their own suite, and then mm -hmm. you... And the guys, y'all yeah. had two rooms to split. Two rooms, correct. Okay. Um, where was Chuck supposed to stay? Um, that, it really wasn't, I don't guess it wasn't really mentioned where he was staying. Where was Chuck hanging out that night? Um, he was hanging with us. Then he did go to the room with Lisa and Nina. Then he did come back. How did that come about, him going to the room with Lisa and Nina? So we was outside talking, just casual conversation. And um, Nina, she walked up. She had the, <clears throat> excuse me, she had the door key with like a note on it, she gave it to Chuck. And uh, of course, me and Dex, we kind of cracked jokes, like, yeah, go pay for the trip, man. <laughs> Something <laughs> to that nature. So that was the understanding, was Chuck needed to go? Yeah, go pay your debt, basically, kind of how we joked around. Because the, the trip was funded by Lisa and Nina. Correct. Um, that next day, that Sunday, October 4th, y'all drove back? Yes, we drove back. Um, <coughs> and where did you go? You went to the Mesquite house? Uh, where yeah, we got to uh, Lisa them house and um, got our bags. Dax and Chuck were saying, hey, man, we want to be bubbling to celebrate. And I'm like, man, I need to go home and go to sleep. I'm finna go home and go to sleep. I'm not hanging with y'all tonight. Is that what you did? That's exactly what I did. Yeah. Okay, so you went home, you go to sleep. Mm -hmm. You're aware that Chuck and Dax go out, though? I didn't know, like, they didn't call me, like, hey, we going out, but that was their plans, yeah. So you knew that was going to be the plan, but you were like, I'm not... Not yeah, I'm sleep. going to sleep. Yeah, I went to sleep. Uh, when's the next time you see Chuck? It was the next day. I actually was working, and he, um, I guess him and Dax was probably already hanging out. And uh, I stepped outside, talked to him, and Dax was like, yo, guess where he met a girl from? And I was like, from where? And he said Seattle. And then I was like, oh, okay. And the reason why he brought that up is because he had an ex girl from Seattle. Okay. And so you guys talked about the fact that he met a girl from Seattle the night before? Yes. Did you guys talk about what he did with that girl? <clears throat> well, I asked him, I said, yes, what y'all do? You take her to the hotel? Because being that she was out of town, I was thinking that maybe he would take her to the hotel. And he just said, oh, no, nah, we just messed around in the car, got some mixes, and I dropped off in Deep Ellum. So he tells you he dropped her off in Deep Ellum. Right. Okay. Um, and that's the end of that conversation? Yeah, that was it. That was, was that in the norm for, for what you knew, Chuck? Uh, the meet a girl, yeah, pretty much. For him to... Find some girl out about Deep Ellum and to go have some kind of relationship and be, you know, move on. I wouldn't say that it's like the norm, like it happened every day, but, you know, you meet people. Just not out of character. It's, it's not out of character, character, yes. So there was nothing to press on about that. It was uh, okay. No, it wasn't like a celebration moment, like you go or nothing okay. like that. No. And um, did y'all hang out that day or was that just kind of a quick passing while you're at work? Uh, we hung out, well, when I got off of work, we all kind of hung out. I think we hung out every single day, I think, that week, yeah, for how maybe was, four days. How was that going? Uh, just a lot of partying, going out, stuff like that, yeah. And 
Chuck drove the Audi, is that right? The black Audi? Prior to all this? Yeah, he would switch cars here and there. And he also switched cars with other people. Okay. And that week of October 5th, did he switch cars to the uh, to another car? Yeah, the white SUV. Um, do you see Chuck again? So sometime that week, when's the last time you see him? Do you remember? I can't recall. So but I know it was the end of the week. End yeah. of the week? Because that Friday is when the, um, I think it was like a, a video or a picture image had popped up of mm -hmm. him saying that um, missing girl from Seattle with a guy that was in a black Audi. Okay. So sometime around this Saturday, Sunday, that weekend after the fact, you're saying that you start to hear that girl from Seattle is missing. Well, actually before that, I would say, um, so like Monday was be the day that he kind of came over. We kicked it Monday, okay. Tuesday. I would say Wednesday is the first time I actually hear about the girl. It's because, um, so being that I worked in a building, the FBI was on the same floor that Dax lived on. And so I called Dax like, yo, when I got to work, I found out. So I called him like, yo, did you hear the FBI on your floor? And Dax, he were all panicky like, so he's like, what? Oh, wait, hold on, let me send you something. And I'm like, okay, cool. So he sent me the flyer that said a uh, missing girl from Seattle. And I was like, nah, which it instantly registered with me because he just said he was with a girl from Seattle. So I messaged Chuck on uh, Snapchat and was like, yo, and he was like, who is this? And I'm saying, missing girl from Seattle. And he like, what dates? And I'm like, bro, dates was with a girl from Seattle. And he was like, nah, that's not her. And that but, was the end of that conversation? Yeah, because I'm not familiar. If right. I'm on the phone so, with Dax and he's telling me that um, I wasn't going. Sorry. Yes, that was the end of the conversation because I didn't want to keep questioning him when someone told me that was the girl. And um, was that your last conversation with Chuck? That yes, it was. Yeah. So if you hung out kind of that entire week, that conversation may have happened then after that Friday. I want to say, yeah, something like that. Um, and uh, you all never talk again. In fact, police eventually come and try and talk to you as well. And they do talk to you. Yeah, after a few weeks. Um, it was really mostly, I guess, uh, yeah, after a few weeks, it was because I guess the pictures that Chuck had posted the day after, which would be the Monday from the show that we had, a lot of people on the internet were speculating that I was with him or I was hiding him or something like that. So you're clearly in, the, in Chuck's social media at some point, and so people were wondering about you. Yeah. So. Um, after that uh, exchange with Chuck um, that you had where you're like, hey, that girl from Seattle was missing, and he's like, not her, um, did his social media keep up or did it go dead for a period of time? Uh, I think for a few days it did, or maybe a few weeks. He wasn't really posting, and it's kind of like out of nowhere he just started posting a lot. So he took kind of a break from social media, mm -hmm. silent, and then you say he started posting a lot. What kind of things was he posting once he started posting? Uh, a lot of old videos. Most of them I was with him, and some of the videos, so I know for a fact they was old. And one of them I actually was like standing, so everybody really thought I was with him, and everyone's calling me and Dax, like, oh, yeah, he's with him, y'all need to turn him in. And I'm like, these are old videos. And uh, did you even have his cell phone number, or how would you guys have communicated? Uh, so we really did cool kind of when the pandemic hit. We never really conversated on the phone or anything like that. We had so mostly that's how we conversated through Snapchat. That was, that's all we communicated with Snapchat. Right, right. because it's mostly I see you at the club, kind of, or he'll come over. Okay, so what you're telling members of the jury is that uh, during this time period after uh, Marcella goes missing, uh, posting on social media, making people think he's with you, right? He looked at that one. On the videos, right? Yes. The videos that he's posting makes it look like he's in Dallas, doesn't it? Yes. And he's with you, right? Yes. And people are saying, somebody contact Freddie and tell him he need to turn uh, Chuck in, right? Yes. <coughs> Correct? Correct. All right. And as far as your relationship with um, Charles Beltran, at 
No time did he ever indicate to you that Lisa was jealous of his womanizing, did you? No. And in fact, um, when she approached you, tried to entice you, mm -hmm. uh, I think you, you said that, that she said you can have whatever you want. She saw your vision, right? Yes. So first she wanted to invest in you as a rapper, right? Not as a rapper, just invest in me. Well, what was your vision? I don't know. You have to ask her. Correct. Mm -hmm. Well, would you be surprised when she said she wanted to invest in you because of your vision? She's talking about your ability to rap. You were a much better rapper than Chuck, weren't you? That's debatable. Okay. Okay. So the, the rap song that you had with Chuck was the um, um, Straight On Sight? Not at all. What, what, what rap the song we had was called Spin the Block, but I didn't release Spin, the song. Spin the Block? What is Spin the Block? So it's basically just talking about lifestyle. You like know, what? Women, money, cars. For example, tell them to the jury what Spin the Block, this rap song that you and Chuck had. What is it? Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. I can't really bar, recall man. it. It was a couple years ago. I didn't release the song. Okay. You didn't release the I song? I would have to actually, like. It was so bad you don't remember 12 bars? Um, nah. I don't what? remember. It's a blank at the moment. Well, uh, you don't remember? Are, are, are you embarrassed to tell the members of the jury the type of nonsense that y'all are talking about women? Um, definitely not about women. Okay. I'm a respectful man, so anybody I hang with is well, respectful as well. Well, well spin, spin the bars, is it, is, it, is it talking about threatening people? It's spin the block. Spin the block? It's more just lifestyle. It? Cars, jewelry, mm -hmm. women, clothes. Things that you get inside of a hip hop song. All right, let's move on. I'm, I'm, I'm just messing with you, Mr. No, that's fine. Uh, you good. Uh, you're not on trial, right? So. Of course, of course. All right. Um, but what I do want to talk to you about is your relationship with Chuck during this time period, right? Mm hmm. Because, I mean, you weren't like uh, involved in some strange entanglement with Miss Dyke, right? Right. Uh, and as far as I think you said that uh, Miss Dice paid for the trip to Arkansas, right? Right. Uh, she paid for uh, what would have been your Audi, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. What could have been your Audi? Could have been my Audi. Okay. Uh, but you're not telling members of the jury that she wasn't investing in Chuck's uh, rap career, are you? That I don't know. Well, who paid for the studio that you would go to? It's the house that he lived in. But who paid for the studio? You know, she paid for that. Paid for it. Yeah. He didn't have it. He she paid for everything. It. Correct. He didn't have that studio before. Right. He didn't have the Audi before either. Right. So she paid. She for paid it. for everything, but it wasn't a. Was he using it for his rap career? What the Audi or the studio? The studio. Yeah, he was recording music. And the truth of the matter is, he used the Audi too, didn't he? He did. Yeah. The, music the video, did. remember? I remember. The video yeah. that's recorded at their house. Correct. With the strippers, right? Correct. At her house. I don't know if they strip this, but correct. Well, yeah. young ladies, they dance like that these days. That one, one, one young. Yes.
Let me show you what's marked as defense exhibit number four. Does this appear to be uh, Charles Beltran, George's Chuck 5050, the person we're talking about? Yes. And does that appear to be, uh, I guess, when he was making a video at uh, Ms. Dyke's house? Yes. Uh, will this assist you in testifying to, I guess, what these girls look like? What about them? I mean, the girls that are on the video appear on, on, on defense exhibit number four, don't they? Do you remember the video? Yes, I remember the video. Okay, does that not appear to be the young ladies that were on that video? They don't look like strippers. That's not my question. Does that so not appear? Question? Yes, that's them. Okay. Judge Alford, what's marked as defense for? Is there any objection? Is there any objection? Okay. Thank you. No objection, Your Honor. Permission to approach, Judge. All right, defense exhibit number four is admitted for all purposes. Permission to approach, Your Honor. You may. And this is Chuck uh, in a video. Uh, this would actually be Miss Dykes' home, correct? Correct. And you know, because you've been there, right? Yes. All right. And this is when he's making a video, right? Yes. Was this the picture me this video? Yes. All right. And uh, when we talk about the uh, young ladies that were in that video, um, these are just a couple of the young ladies that were in the video. Is that correct? Correct. All right. Um, also wanted to ask you about um, the, you and you and Chuck are friends, right? Yes. And you asked him about uh, when the when the FBI came up to you. Actually, they, they, they caught you off guard, didn't they? Yes, they did. It scared, yeah. scared you, didn't they? Yeah, they popped out like ghosts. <laughs> yeah, they did. And, but again, you cooperated. You of didn't course. Run like that. You talked to him. Yes. Right. Um, even though at that time you felt like people were giving illusions that you knew what Chuck was. Right. But you didn't, did you? I didn't. You had no contact with him after, I guess, what you told the members of the jury earlier. Yes. All right. Um, as far as his interaction with the girl from Seattle, because you didn't know her name, right? I didn't know her name. No. But the girl from Seattle, uh, did you, had you even seen her? I seen the flyer. Okay, you saw the flock, but you didn't see her that night like that, did you, right? And I was at home. Okay. Uh, but the girl from Seattle, he didn't say anything to you about anything unusual happening that night other than them having sex in his car, correct? Correct. And then he dropped her off in deep down. Correct. Didn't say anything about Miss Dykes uh, being jealous and, and, and hurt, did he? No, he didn't. He didn't say anything about her being hurt, period. No, he didn't. Or him knowing about her being hurt. Correct. And in fact, when you ask him, when you say, hey man, they, they got this girl from Seattle on this poster, you text him a picture on the poster, didn't you? Correct. May I approach judge? You may. The girl you text him a picture of, I mean, it was this girl, right? Yes. And he said he didn't know nobody, didn't he? Correct. But whether or not he was lying, you don't know, right? 
Uh, I don't know. I mean, and you don't know whether he was lying, right? I don't know if he was lying. No. Okay. And, and but you can't tell when he's lying to you. I think I'm a good judge of character. But you don't know what he's lying to. I don't know at that moment. No. And and you know him pretty well, don't you? I do. But when when he's lying, you have no idea, do you? Correct. And you know him. You spent time with him. Yes. As far as who drove to Arkansas, uh, you say you think it was Miss Dykes, but you don't know because you weren't in the car with him, were you? Correct. I did want to also ask you about um, some of the things that you told the, whether it was the police or the FBI. Uh, you talked about Chuck's, Chuck using S's. You remember that? Uh, yeah, I recall that. You don't remember? I don't recall, but I do know he do use ecstasy time and time. You don't remember telling the, the police that uh, one time you had to take him home because he had uh, used so much ecstasy? No, I never said that. You never said that? I never said that. Or that I recall. That you recall? I did drive him home one time, yeah. But I don't remember telling the FBI that. Okay, from him using too much ecstasy, right? Correct. I took him home because he used so much ecstasy. Okay. But I never sat with a police department officer or FBI and told them that. I was only approached one time and it was outside of my building. Hold on, hold on. All right. Let me ask you, let me try to clarify for you. Okay. What is ecstasy? Uh, it's a drug, a stimulant, I would say. Like methamphetamine? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you talk, what you told the police about um, Chuck's ecstasy use, you don't recall, right? I don't recall. Okay, that's fair. Um, oh, you were referring to. Um, Miss Dykes as uh, uh, Chuck's uh, sugar mom, right? Correct. I mean, that's sugar mama, that's sugar daddies, right? Correct. I mean, you got some older women that uh, take care of younger men, right? Correct. You got some older men that take care of younger women, right? Correct. That's her prerogative to do that, right? Correct. Okay. Um, but as far as all these women that Chuck was around, uh, you you ever see Miss Dykes act jealous about him being around other women? Not at all. Okay. And in the studio, lounge room uh, that was at her home, it wouldn't be unusual for Chuck to bring a lot of people, different people over there, would it? Not at all. Guys, girls? Correct. It was a studio? Correct. I mean, I mean just if you know, it wouldn't be unusual for him, him to have sex with women at that house, would it? Correct. Did you know Carmen? Correct. I did. Now, Carmen wasn't at the house, was she? I don't think she ever came to the house. That was another apartment he had, right? Um, I don't know about it. I think she had an apartment. Where he stayed, right? With Carmen. Correct. And whoever else was there, right? Correct. Okay. Because Chuck was a ladies' man, right? This is debatable. <laughs> <laughs> well, he thought he was, didn't he? Uh, yeah. Correct. You, would you... Say to say he's a womanizer? I don't think he is. You didn't think he's a womanizer? Not at all. Manipulate women? Not at all. get what he want? I never seen him do it. You never seen him do it? Not at all. It's they want to give it to him, then he he received it. Okay. Like like kind of like a pimp, huh? I wouldn't say that. A pimp is I, you know the definition of a pimp. Yeah. Women selling her body, they giving him money. I don't think that what the case was. So check one But gifts. Man. I would say gifts. A lot of gifts from different women. Correct. A couple of baby mamas. Correct. Right? 
Yes. But it's not a womanizer, right? I didn't, I never seen him be a womanizer. Super respectful to ladies. I always approach them with respect. As long as they're giving him what he wants, right? I mean, that's debatable. Um, as far as Chuck, I know you said you never spoke with him uh, after a certain point, right? Correct. Uh, but any doubt in your mind that he knew that these people were looking for him, for this girl from Seattle? Um, was it, so can you repeat the question? I'm trying to strike it, don't worry about it. Um, let me ask you, Well, I wanted to ask you about that. The uh, when you said uh, he had to pay for the trip, when Nina comes up and uh, gives him the key. Yes. And you refer to it. You and Dax were laughing like, "Go, go pay for the trip, right?" <laughs> right. Okay. So he was going back to the room with both of them, right? Yes. <clears throat> so, in your presence, did uh, Lisa or Nina ever appear jealous of each other? Not at all. Okay. They knew Chuck like women. Yes. Like to have sex with women? I don't know those details, but I know he liked women. Okay, was, was Chuck loyal to any woman, in your opinion? Yeah. Loyal in, in regards to what way? They, they he was with him. I mean, if it was understood, it was understood. Loyalty is, it's all on what they aspect of loyalty is. Now, was he faithful? No. Okay. But loyal? Yeah, because he was with him. Okay. So in your opinion, it wouldn't have been cheating. He wouldn't have been cheating on Lisa because they would have had an understanding. Correct. She knew he uh, had other women. From my knowledge. Okay. Yeah. He even brought other women out to that house in Mesquite, right? Yes. Okay. Um, after texting Chuck 50-50, Sending him this picture of the missing girl from Seattle. Did you ever talk to him again? I didn't. Yeah. And all you know is he told you he dropped her off in detail. Yes. Thank you, sir. All right. Nothing further. All right. May this witness be finally excused. Objection, sir. Any objections from the defense? No objection, Your Honor. All right, sir. You are clear. Right. You have your business. Please watch your step. All right. Call your next witness. Your Honor, the state calls Seth Rosenberg. <coughs> Seth Rosenberg, S E T H R O S E N B E R G. And what is it that you do for a living? I work for the city of Dallas for Crime Scene Unit. How long have you been doing that? I've been working for Crime Scene for 13 years. I've been on the police department for 22 years. And uh, is there any special training um, that you have to go through to become a, a crime scene uh, technician with the Dallas Police Department? For to be a detective, you got to go through a four-week class to train how to take fingerprints, use your camera, use the chemicals that you use to lift prints or get possible 
evidence. Uh, you then are you make sure that you can use gloves and and you handle everything properly so you don't cross contaminate any evidence. And after you've done the four week class of training, you do ten weeks of training with a field trainer to show you how to do the calls out in the field. And once you have accomplished that, then you uh, get to go out and answer calls on your own. And you said that you have been doing uh, crime scene for 13 years. Is that yes, ma'am. Okay. Tell the jury kind of what some of your duties are as a uh, detective that goes out to crime scenes. Well, uh, we wait for the calls to come in. When we get called, we go out to homicides, sexual assaults, robberies, assaults, any crime against a person that can physically harm them. Uh, when we get called out to these scenes, we kind of get the layout of what happened from the officers at the location. We photograph what we see when we get there. Then we'll, if we have anything to collect, we'll put placards out. We will retake all these photos with placards that are put out to identify which items go with which number. We will collect them. If there's uh, any DNA to collect, we will collect that. Uh, we're wearing gloves through this whole process. And the very last thing we would do is take fingerprints if we're looking for fingerprints. Now, uh, I addressed you as detective, but you are not the lead detective on this case, correct? Correct. And you're not the investigating detective on this case? Correct. Um, who is it, uh, Detective Rosenberg, that kind of decides what uh, items to collect um, places to swab for DNA and things like that at a crime scene? Uh, depends on which uh, unit, because I believe it was uh, missing persons that was I was first call, called out on. So the uh, detective in missing persons was in charge of this at first. Okay. And so you get some information um, about kind of, you know, the investigation and what's going on. And then when you go in and you take photographs of various things, look pieces of evidence, collect them, and, and then what happens to that evidence? When, when once I collect the evidence, I will send it off to either the property room to, uh, and that's just to store, or Swiss, which is Southwest, uh, Southwest Forensics of Science, uh, to test for DNA, or if we got fired cartridges, we send them to NIBIN to be tested uh, for ballistics. Did you have the uh, occasion to go out to an address of 3113 Kensington Drive in Mesquite, Texas on October 31st, 2020? Yes, ma'am. And what was that in response to? A missing persons. Okay, and um, did the detective on the case at that time, had they obtained a search warrant to search that residence? Yes, ma'am. And was, I guess your job was to um, collect items in that home in response to that search warrant? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And uh, when you entered that home, uh, first of all, how, do, how did you enter? The door had already been forced open. And, and who had forced that door open? I do not know who forced it open. Okay. Was there a, uh, I guess, a fugitive unit or a, a unit of accompanying officers that uh, came with you to kind of seal the perimeter of that house, make sure this process was done without any interference? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And uh, you weren't there when that, that door was kicked open? No, ma'am. So you have no idea if it was one of those officers? <laughs> Correct. Okay. Pleasure. 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 Um, besides those officers, uh, who, all else, who else was out there at the scene, if you recall? Uh, I know uh, Detective Dolby was out there for... Uh, missing persons, and then there's several fugitive officers out there, and a few sergeants, and that's about all I can remember. Okay. And the fugitive officers that we're talking about are those that were there to just kind of make sure that there wasn't inter any interference? Correct. Were you all aware at that time that the house was still occupied? No, ma'am, I had no idea. Okay. Is that the purpose of the fugitive unit? Yes, ma'am. 
Now, upon entering the house, uh, what did you notice about the house? There wasn't much furniture in the house. It looked like they were in the middle of moving. Uh, and in the one of the bedrooms, the master bedroom, the ceiling had caved in. And what time of day was it that you... Uh, this is during the day, since I worked uh, days on the department. Do you recall how many bedrooms were in this home? I believe there was three. Three bedrooms? And uh, like a living room area? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, kitchen? Yes, ma'am. Okay, typical layout? Yes, ma'am. Now, the garage, was the garage, um, I guess... Was it accessible through an alleyway or through the front of the or from the front of the house? The alleyway. And the front door um, is that just as accessible from the sidewalk? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so um, if you're going to park in the driveway or in the garage, you have to drive down the alleyway and enter the, the driveway and garage that way. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, did you take photographs of each of the rooms in the home? Yes, ma'am. And did you uh, do that? What was the purpose of that? Uh, when we get to the location and it is a uh, search warrant, we photograph the entire home to get the layout of the home and what we see when we get there. May I first witness, Your Honor? You may. Is it fair to say you take uh, several photos? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And I'm handing you what's been marked states exhibit 92 through 178. Let me flip through those and uh, just look at each of those photographs. Uh, Detective Rosenberger issued those photographs of fair and accurate representation of the home uh, in the condition it was when you photographed it. Yes, ma'am. All right, Your Honor, uh, State Offer of States exhibits 92 through 178 for all purposes.
Okay. No objections, Judge. They've been previously extended. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. States exhibits 92 through 178 are admitted for all purposes. Motion to publish, publish Your Honor. Okay. Um, and Detective Rosenberg, I'm not going to spend a, a lot of time on each photograph, but I just want the jury to be able to get kind of a general um, idea of kind of the contents of the home. States 193, that's the front of the home. Yes, ma'am. States 94, the garage area. Yes, ma'am. You have a placard there of uh, a four, and is that just in, indicative of something that you were going to collect? Yes, ma'am. And at that time when you collect it, do you have any idea if it's evidence or not? No, ma'am. Okay. Uh, States 95, then a picture of one of the kind of maybe dining areas of the home? Yes, ma'am. Is that your equipment there? No, ma'am, that is uh, at the house. Okay, does that appear to be a mattress up against the side? Yes, ma'am. Iron board, iron? Yes, ma'am. Uh, 96 is that placard again, 97 is an up close of that earring. Uh, 98, uh, can you recall what room of the house this is in? This is the guest bathroom. Okay, and it's kind of dark right there, we didn't talk about this, but um, what, what is one of the tools that you use in determining whether or not you need to swap your DNA specifically in an area? We have a chemical called Blue Star, where you have to have the room or area completely dark, and you spray this chemical on it, and if it hits blood, it uh, will illuminate blue to where you can identify, or not identify, but see where uh, the possible blood could be, because... Your, Your Honor, may I approach the witness? You may. Detective Handing also has been marked as State's Exhibit 179. Does that, uh, do you recognize the layout there? Yes, ma'am. Okay, is that an accurate representation of what it appears to be? Yes, ma'am. State offers uh, 179 for all purposes, tender defense. No objection, Your Honor. It's been previously to tender judge. All right, State's Exhibit 179 is admitted for all purposes. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, and I want, this was in a guest bathroom, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so let's uh, just take a look at State's 179. This is kind of the layout of that Kensing, Kensington home. And can you point on that screen? Um, and I guess the Sorry. screen's not working. <laughs> um, the guest bathroom that we're talking about, is it, can you point up there on that TV? That one right there. Okay, and it's kind of connected to the bedroom right there. Or right outside that bedroom. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, in this instance, it's during the day, so are you able to at least uh, shut off that bedroom to get enough darkness to use uh, this luminol? It's blue, blue star. star. Blue star. It is the bathroom, not a bedroom. And is that kind of what we see right there on the, uh, I guess, door frame? The door frame, yes, ma'am. Is that something that you would have swabbed in? Yes, ma'am. DNA? Okay. States 99, is that that same bathroom? Yes, ma'am. States 100, it's, well, it's terrible on this. Um, Your Honor, if we could get the lights out, I think we'll that light. Sure. Clearer for the jury. Maybe. Um, you can see a little bit of it. The picture itself is kind of dark. Is this the area that we're talking about? Yes. Right there. And where else? I'm sorry. Right, right here. Picture. Right there? Yeah. Okay. Your Honor, I may just uh, have better luck just showing the jury instead of uh, having the lights out. I thought that would help. Let's see. Uh, states 
101. Is this the same bathtub? Yes, ma'am, just a better photo. Okay. And it appears that Blue Star reacted there. Yes, ma'am. Uh, states 102, same bathtub? Yes, ma'am. Sometimes you gotta take a lot of photos to capture what you're trying to see with Blue Star. And, and you're trying to make sure that the jury gets to see the same, or, or investigators uh, get to take, see the same thing that you see in person? Yes, ma'am. Okay, it's kind of unclear, but there looks to be a uh, reaction to Blue Star there. Do you recall what this is a picture of? I believe it's the door. Okay, and then it states 104. Yeah, it's right there uh, by the uh, door handle, right underneath it. Okay, States 105. Is that, I could not tell the States 105, is that a glare from the tile or is that uh, the Blue Star reaction? That's going to be Blue Star reaction. Okay, and do you recall what uh, area that reaction came no, from? No, ma'am, and that's right. why I say sometimes you got to take continuous photos to try to get what you're actually taking uh, photo States of. States 106. Is that that same tile floor but in the light? Yes, ma'am. Okay. States 107, do you recall what bathroom that is? That's still the uh, guest bathroom. Okay. States 108, is that the blue star that reacted to the guest bathroom? Yes, ma'am. States 109. That's just a bad picture of the one from before. Okay. States 110. That's the other sink in the bath. And the same guest bathroom? Yes, ma'am. States 111. Is this where they had to kind of kick in the door or break that door frame to get in? Yes, ma'am. States 112. We already uh, saw pictures similar. States 113. Um, does that just appear to be another area of the kind of common area of the home? Yes, ma'am. And that is also uh, on the floor right there is from the door. Okay. Being forced open. States 114, uh, also a common area. Yes, ma'am. States 115, uh, there's some more things uh, left there in that common area. Yes, ma'am. 116, 117, states 118, I think that may be an identical photo. Yeah, I'm just doing a 360 around the rooms to show what the room's like. States 119, 120, is that going out to the garage? Yes, ma'am. States 121, is that a photograph of the kitchen? Yes, ma'am. And, I mean, as you can tell, there's a lot of items left out on the countertops. Yes, ma'am. States 122, uh, same kitchen, the trash can's full. Uh, say it states 123, that's just a picture of the stove and uh, more items out. Yes, ma'am. Uh, states 124, um, is that just another shot into where that mattress was kind of leaned up against the wall? Yeah, it's showing from the kitchen going out to the front door. Okay. And does this, uh, states 125, it appeared to be the laundry room area? Yes, ma'am. Uh, it's clear there's no washer and dryer, but at, at some point there. Uh, appears there would have been a washer and dryer there. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so it's 126, cabinets in the laundry room. 127, does that appear to be uh, kind of going into where the pantry is? Yes, ma'am. It's the back side of that laundry room. Okay. 128, picture of the pantry and left behind items. Yes, ma'am. So it's 129, uh, additional picture of the pantry, just the top part. Yes, ma'am. It says 130, that's kind of uh, some... It's a water heater. Water heater and, and things, uh, Kroger bags and things left out. Uh, states 131, uh, also the kitchen. Let's look at states 132. Now, states 133, that's the garage area, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and you can see some, you know, if... Uh, looks like a gas can maybe and some other items there in the corner. Yes, ma'am. Says 134, uh, various items on the shelves. States 135, that's also the garage area. Yes, ma'am. 
Now we're moving uh, back into the house, uh, states 136. What does that say? Can you tell? Uh, it looks like math to me. But. Math, okay. Lots of debris and things on the floor, chips, uh, knocked over stool, uh, futon in the corner. States 137, uh, appears to be, you know, a desk in that corner, a Ricky Mor Rick and Morty poster. Are you familiar with Rick and Morty? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And Space Jam, Wonder Woman posters. Um, states 138. States 139. Does that appear to be, uh, I guess, some foam material kind of in that closet? Yes, ma'am. Uh, are you familiar with uh, that material being used uh, to create kind of a sound, um, I don't know, barrier? Yes, yeah, it's kind of like a sound booth. Try to... Sound booth, thank you. Okay. <laughs> the booth escaped me. Um, so it appears to be that if there was a studio in that home, that would yes, be Yes, ma'am. 141, the same? Yes, ma'am. 142, that appears to be like a utility closet? Yes, ma'am. Um, 143, maybe a hall closet with some things left? Correct. Uh, says 144, is that just kind of a picture of the carpet area in the bedroom? That is uh, the far bedroom in the corner of the house. Okay, and I'm looking at the... Says 179, the layout. Is it this bedroom or this bedroom? It's that bedroom. I'm sorry, which one? The one you were pointing at. This one? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So these photographs, uh, uh, states 144 is that corner bedroom. States 145, is that that same bedroom? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And can you tell what that is on the carpet? No, ma'am. States 146? It's just uh, 360 photos going through the whole bedroom. Okay. Says 147, same bedroom? Yes, ma'am. Uh, 148, is that starting to be enough close to that uh, closet where things were left? Yes, ma'am. Same with 149. Correct. Uh, states 150, is that that same closet? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and there's some various candles, uh, looks like Santa Huerta type of candles and things like that? Yes, ma'am. States 151. Uh, is that that hall, that bathroom? That's yeah, the bathroom? guest bathroom, yes, ma'am. Okay. States 152. Same bathroom? Yes, ma'am. Uh, 153. That looks like that's going out into the hallway. Correct. Uh, States 154. Do you recall what room that was in? Uh, I believe that's still the guest bathroom. Okay. Like a linen closet? Yes, ma'am. Uh, state, same with states 155? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and some various items. Uh, shampoo, Pro La La, things of that nature left in that bathroom? Yes, ma'am. Do you use Pro La La? No, oh, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, states 156, is which bathroom is this? If you can recall. That, I believe, is a guest bathroom. Yes, states 157, same guest bathroom. On states no, 150, I'm thinking I'm that is the master bathroom. Okay. Mm -hmm. States 156 is the master bathroom? I think so, yes, ma'am. Okay. Same with 157? Yes, ma'am. Uh, 158. Does that appear to be. Uh, what does that appear to be? Possible blood. It's some kind of stain on the bottom of the bathtub. Okay. Um, and this states 159. What uh, room is this? That is going to be the master bedroom. Okay. And if we go back to the layout of the house, that's this one right here? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, that, uh, the last uh, where the toilet was, that was the guest bathroom. That was the guest yes. bathroom. Okay. Uh, the one with the black shower curtain? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. Um, 160, further 
I mean, just showing uh, other things left in that <clears throat> master bedroom? Yes, ma'am. A primary uh, bedroom, I guess, is uh, 161. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 162, what is all this stuff right there? That is the insulation from the ceiling. If you can see on the top of the photo, the ceiling has fallen down in the master bedroom to where all the insulation's uh, fallen out of the ceiling. Okay. Do you have any idea how long that had been there? No, ma'am. Okay, that's just how it was when you got there. Yes, ma'am. Is this the uh, closet in the primary bathroom area? Yes, ma'am. And it's a, like a walk-in closet? Yes, ma'am. And same in 164? Yes, ma'am. 165, the primary bathroom? Or can you tell from that picture? They're not in the order I took them, so sometimes it's hard to tell. I'm not quite sure. Okay. I, I'm, I'm thinking that's going to be master, though. Okay. Um, States 166, that's a shower curtain. That yes, ma'am. States 167. That's going to be the master bathroom. It's 168. It's going to be in the master bathroom. 169. And that is in the master bathroom. 170. It's just the medicine stand. In the bathroom. In the bathroom. Uh, and it says 171. Do you have a placard there for uh, number one? Is that something you collected? Yes, ma'am. It should be a latex glove. And 172 and 173 are both those gloves? Yes, ma'am. 174, that is the placard for uh, the second, I guess, item that you collected? Yes, ma'am. And can you recall what those items were? Should be an earring and a fingernail. Okay. And 175. Um, do you recall what closet uh, says 175 was? That is a guest bedroom uh, with that empty room that had nothing on the carpet. That's the closet there. Okay. And that's going to be a pair of panties. Okay. And that's something you collected? Yes, ma'am. And when we're talking, that's this bedroom? Yes, ma'am. The other bedroom is the one that had the um, map written on the wall? Yes, yes ma'am. 176. Um, do, you, do you recall which bathroom? That's going to be the guest bathroom. Okay. Versus this is the master bathroom? Uh, it stays 177? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And last is just the garage area of 178. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, um, it looks like you collected four different items. Uh, did you also uh, take some swabs uh, when you were out there? Yes, ma'am. What things did you take swabs of? It was on the guest bathroom. It was the uh, left sink, the bathtub, the interior door, and the bathtub floor. And once you take those swabs, you take those to Swift's? Yes, ma'am. Um, deposit those in, a, I guess, a safety lockbox. How does that process work? When we gather up the DNA, we uh, package it up at our office uh, in, you know, headquarters at uh, 1400 Botham Green. When we package it up, we uh, do the report. We have a copy of the report and attach it to the envelope. We then fill out a SWIFTS form and put it on the shelf and wait for someone to transport it over to SWIFTS to their secure lockbox. Now the other four items, uh, what do you do with those four items? I send all of it to SWIFTS. Okay. Now, you weren't aware whether people were presently living there or not, correct? Correct. But just based on appearances um, and your training and experience, I mean, you photographed thousands of times? Yes, ma'am. 
Um, what was your impression? My impression is someone was leaving fast out of the house. Okay. Now, you had the opportunity to uh, go out on another um, scene that was associated with this incident. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And where was that? This is in Wilmer, Texas. Okay. And um, do you recall the location in Wilmer, Texas? 38 Post Oak. What were you called out there to do? There's an open field that had uh, evidence in the field that we were going out to try and locate. Okay. And... When you went out there, was it just Dallas Police Department, or were there some other agencies out there? There was a lot of agencies out there. Um, and this was in response to finding possible human remains, is that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, did you take some photographs out there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, before we get to those photographs, can you kind of describe to the jury, so you get out to the scene and there's several people out there, correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, did you all eventually coordinate as to how you were going to search the scene and try to get as much evidence as possible? Yes, ma'am. Was it, what were the conditions out there? It was very wet in a dirt field where we had puddles of water everywhere. Okay. And uh, about how many people were out there? I'd say at least 40. 40? Yes, ma'am. And I guess what was the uh, process by which you all coordinated to search this area? Because of how wet it was, we basically got about arm's length from each other and just walked straight as far as we could go, we could come back. If we found anything, we got a flag. We stuck the flag by the item that we found so we wouldn't lose it. And then we'd go and start and walk again the same direction, go straight out, come back. And then we crossed it. We looped around and we went back to the same, uh, the opposite direction, or perpendicular uh, to how we uh, searched it the first time to try to locate any item we could. Did you take some photographs out there as well? Yes, ma'am. Detective Rosenberg of Canning U.S. New Mark states exhibits 180 through 208. Can you uh, flip those through those photographs, please? Are those a fair and accurate representation of the photographs you took? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, state offer states 108 through two, uh, sorry, 180 through 208 for all purposes, tendering to defense counsel. Judge. All right, state exhibits 180 through 208 are admitted for all purposes. Permission to publish your honor? You may. Um, before we kind of go through these photographs, I want to uh, just kind of remind you and the jury of this area um, where you were searching. 
It's right there at, let me see if it'll go back in focus. Right there at Post Oak Road. Um, when did you all got there, did you just kind of park right along here? Yes, ma'am. And that field is just open, correct? Yes, ma'am. And that wooded area, we also went through a lot of the wooded area. Okay. And so you were talking about lining up. So would you all line up and then like walk this way as far as you could? Or can you yeah. kind of show that for the jury um, on the screen up there? We lined up from here up to there at first, and we all walked this way as far as we could. Then when we were done there, we'd go up this way, then we'd walk all the way up through there. They also had drones in the air looking from the sky. When we got done walking that direction, we turned, then we walked this direction as far as we could into the wooded area. And we just completed that area searching like that. Is it fair to say with 40 individuals on the ground and drones that you all did uh, the most thorough job you could? Yes, ma'am. Um, and being out there, uh, kind of taking over, you're a little bit of a country boy? Yes, ma'am. Um, what challenges could you see in finding all of the uh, remains and, and pieces of evidence that were out there? I know why we were out there. We were watching wildlife crossing the street when we were there. And however long it is, the longer someone is out there, the more animals come around and scavenge and eat. And so wherever someone is placed, they're gonna be kind of scattered everywhere. So you're not necessarily gonna to get to find all the bones or all the remains left of anybody out in the field. But you all searched and, and did the best you could and found as, as much as you could. Yes, ma'am. And this is actually the second, the, the initial remains were found a couple days before, um, on March 24th. Were you out there for that search? No, ma'am, I was not. Okay. Um, you all went back out, out there a couple days later, and let's just kind of look through these pictures. Uh, this is States 180, and you can see kind of back there, I mean, clearly it's wet. Yes, um, ma'am. There's puddles and things like that. Um, what is this right there? That's kind of one of the flags that you're talking about? Yes, ma'am. So did you all just mark these things with these orange flags? Yes, ma'am. Uh, what does that find right there? That is garbage bags right there. Okay. And were those collected? Yes, ma'am. States 181? No, Is that close up of that garbage bag? Yes, ma'am. Now, you don't really know where this garbage bag uh, is from, but it could be important in the case. Correct. Um, and I believe it's probably not in a great order, but States 182, this is kind of where you all were parked, and which which side of the road are we searching? We... If you can tell. Both sides of the street. Okay, so you, said you searched both sides. There, uh, we looked on uh, some areas on the other side as well. We didn't go as thorough on the opposite side. Okay. Street, at least when I went there, because we concentrated on that first field at, at the beginning where they found whatever they found two days before, because I don't even know what they found okay. at that time. Okay. States 183, is that an area that you all searched? This is going to be that wooded area. That wooded area that uh, we searched first, uh, and that uh, last picture is probably going to be the same side, just where the wooded area and the field meet. Okay. And from the street, once you walk through, I mean, it's hard to see back behind all this uh, growth right there. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you have to actually walk back in there to see some of these things, like trash bags and things. Like yes, ma'am. States 184, is that uh, another picture of that kind of growth, yep. growth area? Yes, ma'am. How far do you have to walk back through there to, I guess, get past that overgrowth? You don't get past it. It's, it's continuation through back. As, once you get past that, then you get all the trees surrounding. 
Okay. But so this part that kind of blocks the view, does is that remain throughout, or does it kind yes, of um, open up to trees after that? It opens up to trees after this, where it's just hard walking through the trees. Okay. States 185. Is that a different trash bag? Yeah. Uh, that yes, ma'am. Was that also collected? Yes, ma'am. And was it a full trash bag or just a piece of a trash bag? That one is a full trash bag. States 186. Is that the same trash bag? Yes, ma'am. States 187, you can kind of see uh, right in the center. Right there, a marker. Yes, ma'am. And. It's hard to tell, but uh, if you recall, does this bag correlate to that marker? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So just looking at states 187, that marker right there, you can't see from that photograph, you can't even see what is being marked. Correct. You'd have to walk back there before you could actually see uh, that there from and that first picture is kind of taken close to the street is that right yes ma'am okay states 189 that's a, a additional marker yes ma'am um states 190 is that a marker for a piece of duct tape yes ma'am okay you can see from there um the road's really not that far from this marker correct uh, and this is that overgrowth area that we were talking about? Yes, ma'am. Uh, how long of a walk is that to get from the road to there? It's not very far. Okay. <clears throat> States 191. Is that uh, another picture of that duct tape? Yes, ma'am. Okay. States 192. Uh, is that also duct tape? Yes, ma'am. States 193, um, some additional trash bags. And yes, it looks ma like uh, lots of pieces of duct tape yes, wrapped around. Do you recall um, in looking at do you recall where um, that particular uh, group of things was located? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay. Do you know if it was in the wooded area or in that kind of open area? They're almost all right along the edge of the wooded area. The garbage bags really were not inside the wooded area. They're just on the outside of it. Okay. Says 194. Um, is this kind of picture of where the open area and the woody, wooded area kind of come together? Yes, ma'am. And is that kind of the area where these trash bags were found? Yes, ma'am. Um, is that a marker right there? It is. States 195. Uh, we see a couple of markers there, and this is that kind of front puddle area um, where the kind of rain had, you know, kind of filled up those uh, I don't know that they were holes, but you know, that dirt area. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you recall what uh, pieces of evidence? Uh, that is something, like I said, if we found bone or anything, they would put a marker down, and we found a lot of animal bones, so they didn't get collected. Because okay. we, we actually have medical examiner out there to identify the bones. Okay, whether it's medical what? or um, something else. Whether it was animal or human. Animal or human. I'm sorry, I said medical. Animal or human. Um, more of that kind of puddled area. Now you weren't out there for the search, first search to know where they located uh, some of the human remains. I was not. Okay. Uh, States 197. You can kind of see a trap right there. Um, it looks like maybe an animal trap, small animal trap. Yes, ma'am. And then way back in there, you see um, a flag. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Is this kind of right when you start walking into the woods? Correct. States 198. Um, do we start kind of getting closer to that uh, flag that we saw before? Yes, ma'am. 
says 199. Yep. We're back in that corner's flag. And states 200. Can you tell in states 200 what um, kind of what is right there? That should be the clear plastic bag. Okay. States 201. What does that appear to be? Well, that's just, uh, that's the, uh, like, hair scrunchie with hair in it. Okay. And is this kind of more located in the woods area? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and then States 202, I think that's the same thing. Yes, ma'am. And then States 203, looks like it'd be hair. Could you tell if that was human hair or what that was? I couldn't tell you that. I. Just know there's a scrunchie in with the hair. Okay. Um, so like states 204 is a close-up of that plastic bag. Yes, ma'am. Um, states 205 <coughs> is a flag. And states 206, do you, can you tell what piece of evidence they're kind of focused on or what line they are focused on? I think on? it's going to be a fingernail. Okay. This is the one. States 207. I'm sorry, states 206. Can you see? Yes, yeah, that little piece. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and it, was that identified as a, maybe a piece of a fingernail? I, that's what I called it. That's what okay. I think they called it. Could you tell if it was like a, a real fingernail or if it was a fake nail? I think it was one of those fake nails. Okay. Um, okay. States. 208, I'm sorry, 207 uh, appears just to be maybe a piece of that trash bag. Yes, ma'am. And then I think last is states 208, and maybe this will clear up. Um, right there, is that? Yeah, that's going to be the fingernail. Okay, and you said that it appeared to be mm -hmm. a, like a fake nail? Yes, ma'am. Um, Ms. Pittman, I'm sorry. Uh, if you could mark your spot, we have yes, been going for about our, almost an hour and 45 minutes, so it's time for our afternoon break. We will be in recess for uh, 10 minutes. All right.
Sure, you may be seated. Thank you, Ron. You may resume. Thank you. Um, so, looking back at your report, um, the things that you collected and that were also photographed, those are the two garbage bags that were kind of held together by the duct tape, and those were collected near that animal track. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and you collected a garbage bag that was in a ditch. Yes, ma'am. Was that closer to the road? Yes, ma'am. Um, a clear plastic bag that we saw a photograph of, kind of in the wooded area? Yes, ma'am. And then two uh, small pieces of duct tape that were collected near uh, that kind of grouping of hair? Yes, ma'am. Um, head of hair with a scrunchie in the hair was collected in the woods? Yes, ma'am. And then finally you collected a fingernail uh, that was underneath the two garbage bags? Correct. And you submitted all those things to uh, either Swifts or the property? Swifts, ma'am. Swifts, okay. And at that point, it's up to uh, the detective to determine what kind of testing is done on those items. Correct. Now, you can you tell me when those items were left out there? No, ma'am. Uh, you're just collecting things that may be evidence. Correct. And after that process, I mean, your job on, on that part of the case is done. Yes, ma'am. Our um, Detective, I just want to, just, just a few questions I had for you. Um, one in particular, you said that it appeared that someone was leaving out of there pretty fast out of the house. Remember that, saying that? Yes, sir. Uh, you don't know that fact, do you? No, sir. Because, I mean, uh, it can take numerous days to move, can't it? Yes, sir. Uh, in fact, if, if, if you want to move some stuff out and then you tell a friend or a loved one to, to pick to move the rest of the stuff out at a later date, that happens all the time, doesn't it? Yes, sir. Uh, let me also ask you in reference to the blue star. <coughs> uh, it indicates uh, the possibility of the blood, right? Yes, sir. I'm trying to simplify it, but that's pretty much what it does, right? Yes, sir. Like, when I approach this, like, like, for example, if uh, one of my nose bleeds or uh, 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 my mouth is bleeding, whatever, blood here, and I uh, touch it, and I come over here, and I touch this wall, there's still going to be blood, right? Yes, sir. I mean, we may or may not be able to determine whose blood it is. It's just going to show the appearance of blood. Yes, sir. All right. Um, but... Let me also ask you in reference to, let's say if I'm bleeding here and uh, someone tries to clean it up, like let's say some, some drops of blood, right? Yes, sir. And someone tries to clean it up and you, you're spreading it out, trying to wash it, right? Yes, sir. If you don't get all that blood up, it's going to appear that there's blood, correct? Blue star's going to pick yes, it up. Yes, sir. It will. It's gonna, in fact, if I come on, if I touch blood there and I do this. That blue star is going to show next, isn't it? Yes, sir. Because it's just showing the blood, right? Yes, sir. Not how much blood, right? Correct. I mean, and, and, and for the most part, the reason we use the blue star is because people think that they're, they're cleaning their blood up. It, it may appear like the blood is gone, right? Yes, sir. But that chemical reaction in the blue star is going to show if, I guess, blood has contacted an object. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, all the photos that, that she showed you, I don't want to go back through all this. It's late. Uh, but none of those are blood splatters, are they? Uh, no, sir. You refer to as blood splatter. Spatter. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm from West Texas. <laughs> but blood splatter? Spatter. Spatter, right? Yes, sir. And look, may I approach this? Yes. Blood splatter again is, has a distinct look, right? Yes, sir. And you're trained as a, uh, I guess, a criminal response or what do they call you now? I'm a detective. Okay, you're a detective. Crime scene detective, yes, but sir. At crime scene, you know blood splatter when you see it, right? <coughs> yes, sir. Because uh, um, typically, like, say if I, if I stab you and I pull it out, that's where the blood splatter comes, correct? Yes, from the... The blood flinging off the knife. Flinging off the knife, right? Yes. Especially if I do it multiple times. It may do it, it may not, correct? Correct. But uh, again, blood splatter, it may go on the ceiling, it may go on the wall. It just depends on the direction of that knife, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. But you didn't see any blood splatter out of that residence, did you? 
Not in the bathroom, no, sir. Well, did, what, did you see it in, in, in the bedroom? No, sir. Did you see it in the kitchen? No, sir. Did you see it in the garage? No, sir. Did you see it anywhere in that house? No, sir. And as far as the objects that were, because uh, I think we conducted a, uh, or you went out with search warrant on the 31st, um, portions of the house that, that, that appear to be be cleaned, correct? Yes, sir. All right, because when you're in that bathroom, you, you can't just tell it's blood, right? You got to put the boots on. There. Correct. Looks like somebody tried to clean it, right? Correct. Oh, I was going to ask you about that, that ceiling. With all that... Um, um, insulation? Yeah, insulation stuff. Uh, is that... I'm just... I mean, being a detective, would that be consistent with someone who may have uh, broken in that house? Or fallen through the or ceiling. Fall, that's what I'm saying. Falling through the ceiling because they were trying to break through the house? I don't know if there's a leak in the house from water either. Because that insulation looked wet. Okay. That, that's fair. Um, as far as you talked about going out to the location where the remains, some of the remains were, were, were found, um, because that was about six months later, uh, you got a lot of weather. Does weather affect? Um, the evidence that's out there? Uh, it depends on what kind of evidence it is. Okay. Um, as far as, like, let's say the trash bags you took pictures of, um, how long those trash bags were you have no idea, right? No, sir, I do not. Um, if those trash bags were disturbed or moved, whether it's by animals or by human hands, you have no idea, correct? Correct. Uh, and to be true for the same thing with, with the bones, right? Correct. Because of the, the scavenger, am I saying that right? Yes, sir. Animals, we don't know if the animals, you know, moved those bones, right? Correct. Uh, we do know that a lot of bones are missing, right? I don't so even, you, you, I don't know. Okay. Um, but in that area that you took the pictures of, it's wet, muddy, it's open, right? Yes, sir. Open to all the weather conditions, correct? Yes, sir. And in fact, during that time period, you remember us having a severe weather storm? Just if you remember. I know uh, two days before when they did find something, it was dry as could be. We had bad storm in between the two days when I went out. But do you remember the ice storm? No. I guess as far as um, whose blood was in that tub or sink or on that door, that's not your job? No, sir. That's somebody else's job? Yes, sir. See if they can determine it? Yes, sir. Okay, but you do know that there was no blood splatter? Spatter. spatter. <laughs> no blood spatter, right? Correct. And, and, and blood spatter is something that we consistent with, um, well, I mean, stabbing, right? Yes, sir. Uh, actually, gunshot wound too, right? You yes, sir. From the, what y'all call it, like when you shoot somebody in the head and the... The impact? Yes, sir. Creates a... The blowback? A blowback, yes, sir. Okay. All right. Did you see any of that either, did you? No, sir. Um, and uh, as far as like blood drippings in the hallway or uh, things of that nature, uh, would Blue Star typically pick that up? Yes, sir. You didn't, you didn't see any of that, did you? Like I said, it was daylight, okay. and I couldn't get the house dark enough to, okay. to do, and I, it needs to be nighttime to work in the house, really. Yes, sir. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you, Detective. Anything further? No, Your Honor. 
May this witness be fined to you. No objection, Your Honor. No objection. All right. Thank you, Detective. Thank you, sir. If you need to go about your business, please watch with that. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, your next witness. Your Honor, this case calls Julia Whalen. Julia Wayland, J U L I A W A Y L A N D. And can you uh, just briefly tell the members of the jury what it is you do for a living, what your duties are, and uh, the training that you've received to, to conduct that? I'm currently a crime scene analyst with the Dallas Police Department. I've been with the department for 11 and a half years. I started as a technician in property crimes and promoted up to an analyst after three years. And uh, what are some of the duties as a crime scene? As a technician, we respond to property crimes. As an analyst, we respond to persons crimes. So we get requested out by either detectives or officers if they believe that we need to come and document a scene, process a scene, preserve evidence of a scene, and the condition of a scene. And were you called out on uh, December 23rd, 2020 to process a crime scene? Yes. And my understanding is you work nights, is that correct? Correct. And Detective Rosenberg, he works days? Correct. Um, do you recall about what time uh, you were called out to that scene? I responded about 5, 30, 6 o'clock. And this was in December, correct? Yes, ma'am. So it was getting dark early? Yes. And do you recall the location? It was in Mesquite, I believe. May I reference my notes? Yes. I responded to 3113 Kensington. And uh, is that a location in Dallas County? I'm not sure. Okay. Um, but it was in Mesquite, Texas, correct? Right? Correct. Now, who all was out there at that location? There were some SIU detectives and two officers from Mesquite. And SIU, that's different than youth crimes, is that correct? Correct, it's for special investigative unit. Um, Detective Dalby wasn't out there at that time that you processed this house, correct? No. Your Honor, may I approach? You may. Uh, one of your duties is to um, photograph the home and the condition that it is when you get there, is that correct? Correct. And I'm showing what's been marked states 209 through um, 276. You and I went through these uh, pictures actually today prior to your testimony. Is that correct? Yes. Can you flip through those real quickly and just make sure that we didn't, nothing's missing. Yeah. Okay.
Are those uh, all the photographs you took? Or not all the photographs. Are those fair and accurate uh, representations of some of the photographs that you took? Yes, ma'am. And we pared these down from the, the uh, final set that you took. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Your Honor, State Officer States 209 to 276 for all purposes. No objection, Your Honor. They've been produced to tender, Your Honor. All right, State's Exhibits 209 through 276 are admitted for all purposes. Okay, we are going to go through these very quickly um, until we get to kind of some of the things that I really want to focus on. This is uh, just your placard. Um, State's 210, the front of the home. You all took this picture just to, uh, and State's 212, just to show that the door had been fixed since the last processing, correct? I took it to show that there was no damage to the door. Okay. Were you aware that uh, they had processed this uh, home before? I knew that they had processed it, but I didn't, other than they processed it during the day for Blue Star. Okay. And, and then Space 213, some of these we've already seen uh, pictures of, but in these pictures, uh, the home appears to be clean. Is that correct? Yes. All uh, items have been moved out, it appears? Yes. States 215, states 216, that's the entryway. States 217, appears to be a dining area going into the kitchen. 218 is that kitchen. 219, uh, different shot of the kitchen. 220 is leading into, I guess, this uh, garage area? That's to the laundry room? To the laundry room, okay. And 221 is... 221, that's the laundry room, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, another photograph of the kitchen. Kitchen into kind of a common dining, maybe breakfast nook area. Uh, 224, is that a photograph leading out into the garage? Yes, ma'am. That's the garage area. Another photograph of the garage area. And then 227, that's the uh, garage door area. Does this appear to be like a two-car garage? Yes, ma'am. And 228, uh, it appears to be a little bit darker. Are you attempting to use uh, Blue Star at this time and try to get a, a picture of Blue Star? Probably. Do you see any in that particular photograph? Not in that one, no. Okay. 229, that's inside um, kind of a common area? That's the living area with the dining area to the left in the front door and the kitchen to the right. Okay. And is that also kind of a living area? Yes, ma'am. Um, is this uh, the door leading out to the backyard? Yes. Backyard area? Yes. And we have a nice pool back there. And States 233. States 234 is just going back into the home from the backyard? Correct. Uh, States 235, is that that living area? Yes, from standing kind of by the, I presumed, master bedroom and that uh, door to the backyard, looking okay. back towards the front. States 236, these are doors leading into? The presumed master bedroom. Okay. 
and states 237. Is that um, just another photograph of that area? To show the relationship of those doors, and I'm in the living room kind of leading back to the hallway to get to the bedrooms. Okay. Uh, states 238, that's just the fireplace. States 239 is kind of leading, is this kind of the hallway leading back into the bedroom areas? Correct. States 240, another photograph of that, a little closer up. Yes, ma'am. States 241, is this one of the doors leading into the bedroom? Yes, that's to the south bedroom. The south bedroom, okay. And that's the one, uh, the south bedroom, is that the one with the two windows right there? That's one states, of them. Okay, states 242. States 243 is the closet of that room. States 244 appears to be that same bedroom. Did it appear this home had been cleaned pretty thoroughly? It appeared to be. Okay, states 245, uh, if it focuses, is that that same bedroom? Yes. States 246, is that kind of leading out from that bedroom? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And most of these photographs are just, uh, I'm just kind of going through quickly um, because it just is what it is. States 247, is this going into a different bedroom? That's to the southeast bedroom. South, southeast bedroom, mm -hmm. okay. Is there any painting or anything on the walls there? No. States 248, uh, southeast bedroom? Yes, ma'am. States 249, is that that same bedroom? Yes, ma'am. Okay. States 250, is that leading into one of the bedrooms? That's leading into the master bedroom. Okay. And then to the right, is that kind of the guest bathroom? Yes. States 251, I think that just appears to be the same photograph taken kind of from this door. Um, states 252, is that a hallway where you can kind of see the linen closet there? Yes, that's, le that's looking back towards the south to show the south bedroom, the closet, and then the southeast bedroom from the entry to the master bedroom. Okay, that's from the entry to the master. States 253. I'm in the master bedroom looking back to that to show the little entryway of the door. Okay. Stays 254. Is this that the entry into the master bedroom? Yes. Stays 255. Is this also the master bedroom? Yes. Or is this a different bedroom? Same bedroom. Okay. Stays 256. It's the master bedroom. Stays 257. Master bedroom. Do these doors lead out to the pool area? Those lead to that living room area right before the doors to the backyard. Okay. And you've opened that there, so that answered my question. States 258 is the master bedroom <coughs> leading out. States 259, that's the master bedroom. Yes, ma'am. States 260, also master bedroom? Yes. States 261, does that appear to be the master bedroom going into the master bath? Yes. States 262. Sorry. That's that other corner of the master bedroom between the entryway and the bathroom. Okay. States 263. That's part of the master bathroom. Says 254. It's 264, I apologize. That's the lavatory in the master bathroom? Mm-hmm. Say it's two sixty. You have to answer out, out loud yes or no. I'm sorry, yes. Okay. Stays 265, is that also the master bathroom? Yes. Okay, and that's the, uh, stays 266, uh, that's the door leading into the master bedroom closet? Yes. Now, stays 267, we see a couple of cards there, uh, which appears to have something that reacted to Blue Star. Can you tell the jury what that is? That's my um, quality control test that I do before I actually start spraying the Blue Star onto items to show that it's working the way it's supposed to. Okay. And uh, states 268, is this a picture of the corner of the garage area? Yes, ma'am. And you put a number one placard there. Uh, what was the purpose of that? To show the area that I swab okay. based on the luminescence from Blue Star. Okay. And is this a photograph of that same kind of area that you, um, boy, that's bad. Mm -hmm. I'll show the 
the jury here. Is this a photograph of that same area that you swabbed? Yes. Okay, and if you see right there, that little tiny spot, is that the spot that reacted to Blue Star? Yes. Now, that was the first uh, spot that you uh, swabbed and first area that reacted to Blue Star, is that correct? Correct. Uh, this is States uh, 271, and that's your second placard. Where is that uh, Blue Star area? That is in the master bedroom by the bathroom door. Okay. And did you take swabs of that area as well? No. Okay. And... Uh, why did you not take swabs in that area? Because I cut the carpet out. Oh, that makes sense. When you cut the carpet out, then what did you do with it? With all the collections I took, I collected them, I packaged them, and I left them on my evidence shelf, and then the detective that was involved collected it and took it over to Swift's. Okay. So you cut that carpet out. Um, this is States 272. There's a number three placard there. Um, and I'll, since that's so hard to see, uh, do you recall what bedroom that was in? That was also in the master bedroom, kind of in that entryway door going towards the hallway. It's on the, if you're looking at the doorway, it's on the right-hand side. Okay. And that uh, blue star shows that there may be a possibility of the presence of blood there. Correct. Did you cut that piece of carpet out or did you swap that? I cut it out. States 273, it's just a picture showing the areas that were cut out. Correct. States 274, is that in one of the secondary bedrooms? That's in the southeast bedroom. The southeast bedroom. And uh, does that show uh, the presence of presumably blood from the Blue Star? It shows a positive reaction. A positive reaction, okay. 275, um, that has a uh, number four placard. Is that the fourth area of carpet that you cut out based on the um, response to the Blue Star? Correct. Okay, and that's located under, kind of under that window area um, in that bedroom, correct? Yes, ma'am. Does that appear to be uh, quite a a bit of substance that is reacting? Or can you tell? I can't tell, I'm sorry. Okay, and based on that, you cut out that whole, basically, wall of carpet there um, in States 267, is that correct? Correct. And you packaged all of that, um, put it in the evidence room uh, for the detective to then determine what to do with that next, whether it's take the Swiss, test it, or, or whatever. Correct. Um, based on the Blue Star, can you tell whose blood that is? No. Can you tell um, when it got there? No. Nope. Um, your job just is to go in and, and spray, uh, not to simplify it, but spray the various areas and see if there is this reaction to this chemical. Correct, to locate and preserve the evidence if I find any. And, and locate and preserve that. In, in, in this uh, situation, you didn't just cut out the carpet, you cut out the carpet pad too underneath. Correct. Your Honor, pass the witness. Um, is that the, I guess, four by 10 uh, piece of carpet you, you cut out? I'm not sure of the size of it. Okay. Um, as far as, um, I guess, even when you go back, what date did you go back for? I'm sorry? What date did you go and do your... Uh, I began on December 23rd. Okay. Um, 
you didn't uh, see any uh, blood splatter spatter on the wall, correct? No. Okay. Anything consistent with what you would think would blood splatter on the uh, on the floors? There was some discoloration on the carpet in the southeast bedroom. Where someone could have uh, was cleaning was. Again, you don't know whether it's less bad or not, is that what you're saying? Correct. Okay. Um, that's all I have to ask. Can you redirect? No, you're all. May this witness be finally excused? No objection, Judge. No objection, Judge. Right. Thank you. Uh, if that's paid away, then you're free to leave and go about your business. Thank you. Please watch your step. Call your next witness. State calls uh, Amanda Webb. Solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in this case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth that must be found. I do. Thank you. May be seated. Thank you. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Ma'am, can you uh, state your name and spell your name for the court report, please? My name is Amanda Webb. A-M-A-N-D-A, -A last name W-E-B-B. -B. And Ms. Webb, what is it that you do for a living? I am a forensic biologist, um, specifically a DNA analyst at the Southwestern Institute of Forensic Sciences, also known as SWIFTS or the Dallas County Crime Lab. Can you tell the jury uh, some about your education and training um, that you had to complete before you can uh, have this position? I have a Bachelor of Science degree in Microbiology from Texas A&M University. I have a Master of Forensic Science degree in Forensic Molecular Biology from George Washington University. I worked for approximately a year and a half at the Armed Forces DNA Identification Lab in their mitochondrial research section. And I have been at Swiss in the biology unit since 2008. Um, upon being hired at Swiss, we go through a comprehensive training program there. I'm qualified both in serology testing and in DNA testing. Um, in DNA testing, we are proficiency tested twice a year, and I am licensed by the Texas Forensic Science Commission to perform DNA analysis. Um, have you testified as an expert in this field before? Yes. Uh, how many times? Uh, many. Okay. And have you been considered an expert in the field of forensic biology? Yes. Now, kind of tell the jury, how, uh, how does Swiss work when it comes to DNA testing? Um, who all can submit evidence to be tested? We receive evidence from investigating agencies. Um, we can receive requests for testing from uh, attorney's offices or through a court order. Um, we are a fee-for-service laboratory, so we do charge all the agencies for any testing that we perform. Um, and evidence is submitted and it can it comes along with a request for what type of biology testing they would like done. And you said attorney's offices, that includes defense attorney's offices. If they want to pay uh, SWIFTS to test or retest certain items, that's available as well, correct? Yes. And can you tell the jury a little bit about, uh, first of all, kind of what serology is and what that means? Serology is the testing for the presence of biological fluids, such as blood, for example. Um, when evidence comes into the lab and DNA is ultimately requested, um, that process begins in the serology unit. So serologists will test items for blood if requested, 
and they will collect samples from items that are then sent forward on for DNA testing. Was, were several items that were collected in this case from um, the 3113 Kensington address, were those submitted to the lab um, to be uh, analyzed by the serology department? Mm -hmm. Um, what, as far as the address goes, um, I'll have to refer to my notes to see okay. where we uh, did, did Detective Christine Ramirez uh, submit uh, several items to be tested to you um, under this case? Yes. Okay, and you don't know where those items came from, but um, it may have been from different locations. Yes. Okay, and the first uh, step of that is, uh, as you said, for some of those items to, to be tested uh, by serology. Yes. Um, and that's for the presence of blood, is that correct? That is one type of test that they perform. Okay. And then the uh, second type of test, testing done on uh, these items was the DNA testing. Yes. Now, can you tell the jury, um, it, most people kind of know, but what is DNA? DNA is a substance in our cells. It's basically like our genetic blueprint. We get half of our DNA from our moms and half of our DNA from our dads. So 99.9% .9 of our DNA is all the same. That's why we all have two eyes, two ears, a nose, and a mouth. Um, but 0.1% of our DNA is different, and it's this person of DNA that we look at in forensic testing. Um, this portion does not change over our lifetime, and it is unique to all individuals with the exception of identical twins who would have the same DNA profile. And you mentioned before that several items were submitted to you uh, under this case uh, to be tested. And you actually completed several, several reports, is that correct? Yes. Um, when you are testing DNA, do you need to have, um, I guess, a sample swab from a, a known contributor um, before you are able to make comparisons uh, to the DNA that is possibly uh, taken from a swab? You know, a carpet or something of that nature. If we are asked to compare DNA profiles from evidence samples to known individuals, then yes, we will um, receive a either a buckle swab standard or a blood sample from that person, and from that sample, we develop a DNA profile for comparison. And your honor, may I approach? You may. I mentioned before uh, you completed several reports in this case, um, handing you what's been marked states uh, 277 to 283. If you look at those reports and compare it to what you have.
Yes, those are all copies of the DNA reports that I issued in this case. Uh, Your Honor, the state offer states 277 through 283 for all purposes. All right, states exhibits 277 through 283 are admitted for all purposes. Um, before we start talking about the reports, can you just tell uh, the jury where various sources of DNA may come from? So DNA is found in the cells of our body, such as our skin cells. And it is found in saliva, sweat, blood, and um, bodily secretions that we might have. And uh, how does, I guess, how uh, does time affect whether or not DNA may be present on a particular surface? And it really depends. Um, if DNA is deposited on a surface and then that sample is kept in you know, temperature controlled environment, um, humidity controlled environment, and there is nothing there to you know, physically remove that DNA, um, then it can stay there indefinitely. Um, if Factors such as you know, washing hands, you know, cleaning, those types of things can you know, remove DNA from an item as well. And how would, uh, I guess, that DNA uh, be affected by, say, being out in the elements? Um, out in the elements, it has the potential to degrade DNA um, if that's in extreme heat or extreme humidity, um, if there's rain um, that can potentially wash anything away. All of those factors could you know, contribute to what happens to that DNA. Uh, you mentioned washing hands. How would uh, using maybe cleaning supplies and things of that nature affect um, the ability uh, to, I guess, recover DNA from certain surfaces? Um, using cleaning supplies, um, that has the potential to um, uh, prevent us from getting a DNA profile. It will affect that DNA. All right, Ms. Webb, um, I want to start with uh, States 25. Uh, this was the initial DNA report uh, that you completed on this case, and it's uh, dated January 25th, 2021. Uh, do you recall com completing this uh, report and this analysis? Yes. And uh, you received this list of items from Dallas Police Department, a glove, a press-on nail, piece of plastic, underwear, earrings, swabs, uh, the ledge of the floor, I'm sorry, the ledge of the bathtub, the floor of the bathtub, purse, face mask, deodorant, lighter, and hairbrush. Is that correct? Yes. Now, we're going to kind of move through this report um, <coughs> fairly quickly. Um, at that time, you only had, uh, I guess, a comparison uh, DNA profile for one individual. Is that correct? Um, yes. For for this report, um, we we did not have a known standard that I discussed before, um, a buckle swab or a blood sample from an individual. Um, we were given some items from the investigating agency um, that we were uh, that we were told were known to belong to uh, Maricela Botello Valdez. And we used a profile developed from one of those personal items, um, specifically a sample from a face mask, to use to compare to all of the evidence profiles in this report. Okay, and if you recall, uh, can recall, was that like a cheetah print face mask, or do you know? I received a sample collected from that face mask. Um, I could refer to the serology notes to determine the type of face mask if you would like. Um, that's okay at this time. We can. We can get back to that. Ms. Pittman, I'm sorry, what number exhibit is that? This is States 277. All right, thank you. Um, the second report, um, and like we said, this was just uh, based on the only known comparison of Maricela Botello. And, and I'm sorry, I want to go back to that 
text. We didn't even talk about results. At that time, um, we have results of excluded 77 in 100. Can you explain to the jury kind of what that uh, type of result means? Yes, so um, first let me explain real quick what we do when we do this comparison. Um, so when we receive um, our DNA profiles, um, we look at those DNA profiles to determine if that DNA profile is from a single person, if it's a single source, or if it is a mixture of DNA from two or more contributors. Um, if anybody is included, if any known standards that we're comparing to that sample is included, then we always give a statistic. And that statistic will um, tell you how rare it is that somebody might be included in that sample. Um, it will give weight to them being included in that evidence sample. Um, so somebody can be either included or we can exclude them from that DNA profile. So they could not have contributed that DNA. So in this case, um, when it says excluded, then that DNA profile um, is excluded from being a contributor, correct? Yes. Now this uh, 77 and 100, um, can you kind of help the jury understand what that result means? Yes, what that statistic is saying is that um, she is included as a possible contributor to that sample. Now if, if you were to randomly select an unrelated individual and compare them to that DNA profile, you would expect 77 out of 100 people to be included as a possible contributor to that sample in the same way um, that individual is included as a possible contributor. So 77 in 100 means if you were to randomly select an individual, 77 out of 100 people would also be included in that same way. Okay. So as far as um, in, I guess, determining whether or not DNA or a DNA profile uh, matches uh, Maricel Vitello, that 77 in 100 uh, is, is not a very good statistic. Correct. Now, when we talk about female one over here, um, were you able to um, get a DNA profile from some of these swabs and samples that you got from, say, the glove, the nail, and things like that, uh, and develop a profile for a, a female? Yes, we developed a DNA profile from the sample from the underwear that was a DNA profile of a single source, a single contributor, and it was a female that did not match the DNA profile of Maricela Patello Valdez. And so for comparison purposes, we named that unknown DNA profile as female one. And without a comparison uh, swab or um, sample from a known individual, you, you just can't name this person? That is correct. Uh, let's move on to States 278, and that is a report um, dated January 29, 2021. In this report, um, it is listing uh, newly analyzed evidence, and that is a, a 4.2.1, a piece of carpet, 4.3.1, a carpet pad piece, 4.4.1, a piece of carpet, uh, 5.1, a piece of carpet, and 5.2, a carpet pad piece. Um, did you receive a, a cutting of a um, piece of carpet and carpet pad uh, from the Dallas Police Department? Yes. And how do you determine uh, what part of that carpet uh, you I guess, um, take a sample from in order to analyze for DNA? So that item would go to the serologist, and the serologist had a request to screen that item for the presence of blood. And once they screen that item and they receive their test results, then they will choose samples to take from that item <coughs> if they were positive for the presence of blood and send them on to DNA. Now the process in serology for testing for blood, um, there's two tests that they can perform. Um, the first test is a presumptive test for blood. And what that means is that it will test positive in the presence of blood, but it is not specific to human blood, and it is not specific only to blood in general. There are other things that can potentially give you a positive result with that presumptive test. 
Um, if they get a positive result with that presumptive test and there is a large enough sample, they will do a second test, which is called a confirmatory test for blood. And that test is um, confirmatory <coughs> for the presence of human blood. Okay. And was that done on uh, these uh, items that we just listed, the uh, serology? Those items were tested for blood and serology. Okay, and were they confirmed to have the presence <coughs> of human blood? Items 5.1 and 5.2, they had samples that tested positive with that confirmatory test for human blood. And samples collected from 4.2.1, 4.3.1, and 4.4.1, and they tested positive with that presumptive test for blood. For item 4.2.1, they, there was enough sample to move forward and perform that confirmatory test. However, that confirmatory test was a negative result for the presence of human blood. It was not detected. Um, the other two items, 4.3.1 and 4.4.1, there was not enough sample to move forward and perform that confirmatory test. Now, once that testing was complete, it moved on to the DNA analysis. And again, you only had Maricel Vitello as a contributor, is that correct? That was the only known profile that we had for comparison at that time. Um, we had also compared to those samples that DNA profile of that unknown female, which we have named female one, that was compared to these samples as well. And you stated before that the 5.1 and 5.2 were both confirmed uh, to have the presence of human blood, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so if we look at the results here, um, when you uh, tested or analyzed the, the DNA from 5.1.1, and that's a stain from the piece of carpet, uh, we have T1 and T2, and uh, the stain from the carpet pad piece, T1 and T2, um, what were the uh, statistic, what is the stati statistic likelihood that uh, Maricela Vitello uh, would be a contributor to that um, DNA? For samples 5.1.1 and 5.2.1, um, the DNA profiles obtained from those two samples were from a single female that matched the DNA profile of Maricela Vitello Valdez. And that statistic is less than one in 10 trillion. And what this means is that if you were to randomly select an individual and compare them to this DNA profile, you would have to have more than 10 trillion people before you'd expect another person to match that DNA profile in the same way. Um, to put that number into a little bit of perspective, um, we have about 8 billion people on the earth right now. So you would have to have more than a thousand of the Earth's populations before you would expect another person to match that DNA profile in the same way. Um, for sample 5.1.2, the DNA profile obtained from that sample was a mixture of two contributors. Um, we were able to separate out that mixture into a major contributor, so a DNA profile that contributed more DNA and a minor contributor that contributed less DNA to that sample. And that DNA profile of the major contributor matched the DNA profile of Maricelo Vitello Valdez with that same statistic that I just discussed, that less than one in 10 trillion. When you talk about major and minor contributors, um, are you able to determine if the minor contributor, if that DNA source is from, say, human blood or touch DNA or some other bodily fluid um, in your analysis? Um, we are not able to determine by the DNA profiles what type of um, cells that came from. Um, we are only able to perform that test on that stain itself. Um, and then once we obtain the DNA profiles, um, we are not able to tell what that DNA profile came from. Blood, skin cells, a different bodily fluid, for example. 
Now, I want to move on to the next report, and this is kind of uh, the report where you finally have some other uh, DNA, uh, known DNA comparisons uh, or samples so that you can make comparisons to um, other individuals to determine if they may be a contributing source. Is that correct? Yes. In this report, we have three additional known standards for comparison. Okay. And <clears throat> on states 279, uh, this, this report was dated June 8, 221. Um, who were the other known comparisons or standards, known standards uh, with which you were able to compare um, the DNA that you had from these other swabs? We were given a buckle swab standard from Lisa Dykes. Um, AKA Lisa Beltran in our documentation. Um, a buckle swab standard from a Charles Beltran and a buckle swab standard from a Nina Murano, um, AKA Nina Beltran. Okay, say so AKA Nina Beltran and you said from your documentation, um, where did you receive that documentation as far as their, their last name Beltran? A Dallas Police Department submittal information to us. Okay. Uh, looking on the, the first page, um, we have several items um, of newly analyzed evidence. And we have a, a towel, a gray towel, a white towel, a blue towel. You mentioned the buckle swab standard from Lisa Dykes, AKA Lisa Beltran. Uh, glove number three, glove number four, glove number five, duct tape number six, duct tape number eight, duct tape number nine, duct tape number 10. We have a buckle swab standard from Charles Beltran, a pistol, a necklace, a buckle swab standard from uh, Nina Morano, AKA Nina Beltran, a fingernail, piece of duct tape, pieces of duct tape, plastic wrap with duct tape, plastic bag with duct tape, plastic bag with duct, duct tape, and a garbage bag on that page. <clears throat> And then, did you also compare um, the new known standards of Lisa Dykes, um, Charles Beltran, and Nina Morano to these previously analyzed pieces of evidence? Yes, we did. Okay. Now, Were you aware of where all these items that were tested, where they came from? Um, there's information in the submittals um, that discuss the location of these items. Um, what's listed on the report in parentheses, um, those are things that were written on the packaging of the items that we received. And that would be the AKA Lisa Beltran? Nina Beltran, you said in parentheses, I'm not sure. Oh, I apologize. Um, thank you for correcting me. Um, in the quotation marks. Okay. So like in, in this uh, instance, the swabs, it says ledger bathtub, floor of bathtub. Um, glove has quotation marks, number one. And if there was uh, a photograph that had like a number one evidence plaque, would that be where that came from? Is that fair to say? Is those numbers are um, were written by the police department to relate to their numbers. Okay. Now, some of the things that I'm flipping through, these are just um, kind of information, and we talked about just a, a minute ago, you talked about a single source, a simple mixture, major minor mixture, and a mixture subtraction. Uh, can you tell the jury kind of what a single source uh, profile is? Yeah, so a single source DNA profile is a DNA profile that is from a single person. Um, DNA profiles that we observe can be from one person or we can observe the presence of two or more, two, three, four contributors in a sample. 
um, if it is a mixed DNA profile, so from two or more people. There are different ways that that mixture can be interpreted that are listed here. So if it is a simple mixture, then we are not able to separate that sample out into major or minor, and we are just looking at a mixed DNA profile, and that is how we are interpreting that DNA profile. Um, in some instances, we are able to determine that one person contributed more DNA than another person in that sample, and in that case, we will interpret that as a major and a minor, which is listed there as well. Um, that last one, mix mixture subtraction, that type of sample is if you have a DNA profile from, for example, a person's body. We consider that an intimate DNA sample to where you would expect their DNA profile to be on a sample collected from their own body, for example. And so we will take that DNA profile of a known person and subtract it out and then have a DNA profile of a second contributor that can be used for comparison. So all of those are different ways that we are able to look at these DNA profiles. Let's move on to uh, basically the results of your DNA comparison. And you had already mentioned before uh, the results from the carpet pad and a piece of carpet for Maricela Vitello uh, down here. Um, so let's just kind of start at the top um, with the stain from the glove. There doesn't seem to be any uh, statistics that are very strong in that case matching the um, DNA to any of the known samples. If that DNA profile was a mixture of two people that we were not able to separate out into a major and a minor. Um, the only person included in that sample was Lisa, Lisa Dykes. Um, but that sample statistic is 1 in 39. So if you were to randomly select an individual and compare them to that mixture, one out of every 39 people um, would be included as a possible contributor in that same way. Um, and everybody else is excluded. And the stained swabs from the ledge of the bathtub and the floor of the bathtub, um, and let's just start with the stained swabs at the ledge of the bathtub, uh, each of these individuals is excluded, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, and the stained swabs for the floor of the bathtub, we have uh, just three individuals included, and that is Maricela Vitello with the statistic of one and two, female one, and Charles Beltran is a one and two. That's correct. Okay. Um, I kind of skipped over this. A sample from piece of plastic number two, and again, you don't know where, what exactly or where that piece of plastic came from, but the only contributor there is, is Charles Beltran with that uh, one in 10 trillion number, is that correct? Yes, the DNA profile obtained from that sample was a mixture of two contributors that we were able to separate out into a major and a minor contributor. Um, the DNA profile of the major contributor uh, matched the DNA profile of Charles Beltran. Um, that statistic is the less than one in 10 trillion st statistic that I explained earlier, and everyone else compared here is excluded as being a possible contributor to that sample. Uh, going back down here to the stain 4.3.12, the stain from the carpet pad piece, um, the only included person is, is Lisa Dykes, and that's in a 1 in 5 um, statistic, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, and then the stain from the piece of carpet, T1 and T2, Maricela is the only contributor with that, that 1 in 10 trillion statistic and everyone else is excluded. Yes, she is the only one included in those samples. Um, the same applies for 5.2.1. Um, Maricela is the only person that is included in the 1 in 10 trillion number and everyone else um, is excluded, is that correct? Yes. Now there was a uh, pistol that was uh, submitted to you uh, that Mr. Beltran is the uh, one in 10 million, I'm sorry, 10 trillion uh, statistic as being a possible contributor to that DNA, is that correct? Um, yes, referring to sample 10.1.3, 
Um, that DNA profile was a mixture of three contributors, and we were able to separate out a major contributor to that sample. And the DNA profile of Charles Beltran matched the DNA profile of that major contributor with that less than one in 10 trillion statistic. Um, the female one profile was included as a possible contributor to that minor contribution, and that statistic one in two, and then everybody else is excluded. 14.1.1.1, uh, the sample fingernail. Maricela is included as a one in 90 um, as a possible contributor, and then everyone else is excluded. Yes. Okay. And as far as uh, the other items uh, listed here, uh, the duct tape, um, plastic bag with duct tape, garbage bag, things of that nature. Were you able to obtain any um, usable DNA profile for which to compare to your known uh, standards? From all of the samples that were collected from the duct tape, um, the there were only two samples that we were able to obtain a DNA profile from to use for comparison. And from all the other samples, we were not able to obtain a DNA profile. And were you able on any of the duct tape uh, samples? And, and I skipped over 14.3.12 and 14.5.15. Were there any statistics that were um, I guess, uh, useful for law enforcement purposes uh, to determine who may have been a contributor to that? The only, um, only samples that we included somebody, we had a statistic of one in two and 53 in 100. So one out of every two people and 53 out of 100. Okay. That was phase 279. Um, States 280, you received some uh, hair samples and a cigarette butt, um, and this is uh, dated October 5th, 2022. Um, were you able to determine, I guess, where these uh, items came from based on any information that you have? Um, the, the hair samples were listed as being collected from a vehicle, um, from the interior occupant compartment and from a trunk area. Okay, does it uh, state what vehicle those were collected from? Um, that is listed from the agency as an Audi A6. Okay. And in looking at that, uh, it appears on page four or five of that report, you were able to uh, get a DNA sample from a hair root in 6.4.1.121. Um, two individuals, Charles Beltran and Nina Morano, were excluded and then three individuals have this number of 79 and 100. That's correct. Okay. And then uh, as far as the cigarette butt is concerned, uh, Charles Beltran, uh, his DNA, uh, when compared, uh, analyzed was the statistic of one in 10 trillion. Yes, the DNA profile obtained from that sample was a mixture of two contributors that we separated out into a major and a minor contributor and the DNA profile of Charles Beltran matched that DNA profile of the major contributor with that less than one in 10 trillion statistic. Moving on to states uh, 
281, and we'll look at 281 and 283 uh, kind of together. This was April 14th in 2023, and States 281 is an identical report to States 283 with the addition in 283 of uh, the discussion of um, the previously analyzed evidence of the face mask what, uh, by which you were able to obtain Maricela Botello's uh, DNA profile. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And in this particular um, States 283, you received a bone uh, sometime in, in 2023 um, and were requested to <coughs> compare that to uh, a known sample to determine whether or not that was Ms. Patello's uh, bone. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And in that 16.1, the sample from the bone, uh, the statistic is 1 in 11.2 million. Um, that possibility of having yes. another contributor contributor to that DNA. Is that correct? Yes, that statistic is um, the same as we discussed before. I'm comparing the sample from the bone to the sample that we received from a tooth um, of Maricelo Botello Valadez. So the DNA profile we obtained from the sample from that bone uh, matched the DNA profile obtained from the tooth with that statistic of 1 in 11.2 million. So if you were to randomly select an unrelated individual, compare them to that sample, um, one out of every 11.2 million people would match that profile in the same way. Okay. And the uh, tooth, uh, the sample from the tooth and the sample from the initial face mask, you compared those two items as well and it appeared to be from the same source, is that correct? The DNA profile obtained from that face mask that we previously used for comparison as her DNA profile matched the DNA profile obtained from the tooth of her. Okay. And then the last report that uh, we're going to talk to is state uh, talk about is states 282. Um, and this report was on June 13th, 2013. Is that correct? Uh, June 13th, 2023. Yes. I'm sorry. 2023. Uh, it's getting late in the day. Um, you received uh, three pieces of uh, evidence, um, and those are the three pieces of newly analyzed evidence. Uh, do you recall where those pieces of evidence came from? Um, those items were packaged in a outer packaging, um, the same outer packaging as that bone that we tested in that previous report, item 16. And you did not receive those items until... Um, sometime in 2023, after February, is that correct? Those items were received into the laboratory on February 16th of 2023. And you don't have any idea if those items were collected after uh, the initial collection of items that you tested previously? Um, I don't know when they were originally collected. The results um, of those items, the sample from underwear T1 and T2, uh, the four known samples that you have were all excluded, is that correct? Yes. And then female one was excluded. Yes. Um, what does this male one mean? The DNA profile we obtained from one of those samples was a single source DNA profile from a single male. And that DNA profile did not match any of the known standards that we had. And so we gave that DNA profile the name of male one for comparison purposes. Okay. And um, we can see, see the statistics here on the sample of underwear T1 and T2 and the sample uh, from the bra T1 and T2. Uh, we have the one in 10 trillion statistic uh, for T1, um, the sample from underwear T2 is one in 22.2 million, and then the sample from bra T1 is one in 10 trillion. And then the last statistic is the second sample from T2 is 1 in 14. Yes. Is that correct? 
Um, do you have any way of, of identifying who, uh, at this time, who this male person is? No. And again, you, you're not sure, you don't know, you don't have the factual knowledge of when the underwear bra twist ties, uh, twist tie was collected or where it was collected. No. So at this point, that's kind of an unknown. Um, yes, that would be in the agency's um, documentation. All right, pass the witness. Judge, we'll, 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 we'll pass her at this time. All right, you want her subject to recall? Yes, ma'am. All right, Ms. Uh, Webb, the defense is going to reserve their right to cross examine you, so we need you on call to be available uh, not only for the rest of this week, but for uh, next week as well. All right? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You are excused for now. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have a, a witness you can call at this time? Uh, it's not at this time, Your Honor. They're all uh, just got from Florida. All right. Well, then we will recess a little early. It is 5 o'clock. Um, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, please remember your instructions uh, regarding um, not watching the news or reading the newspaper uh, or doing any independent research at all. Uh, in addition, I'm going to ask that you be back in the jury room at 9.15 tomorrow morning. Maybe we can get a little bit of an earlier start. So you are ordered to be here no later than 9.15 tomorrow morning. Thank you so much. All right.